Hi. <laughs> I'm wearing a cute little hoodie. That I... I'm a bit, like, torn because it already has ears, but, like, so do my headphones. And I'm like, should I wear them like this? <laughs> or should I wear them like this? Double cat ears. <laughs> I don't know. It's a bit crooked too, so it looks really weird. Hold on, wait. Oh, this way. And it's fine like this. So, yeah. Let's just get right into it, why don't we? Okay, desktop audio is on. I turned it down a bit because I'm, I noticed it was a bit um, loud last time. So, let's just get into it. This is a crazy case. The girl, let her go. Shut up! Come closer! And I kill her! Yeah. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Terry Falls. Charge, kidnapping, murder, sentence, death penalty. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Mallory Hawthorne, recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before Mia and I ever met. The double 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 betrayal, isn't that a quadruple betrayal? So this is Mia's first trial. Ugh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. Ah! Good morning! Don't be so jumpy, Mia. My camera is a bit... fucked. Wrong way. This way. There we go. That's better. I didn't do nothing! I swear. I didn't kill a nobody. Harry Falls, my first client, sentenced to death five years ago, and now a prison escape B. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Uh, um, so why did you escape anyway? Huh. Uga? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry! I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never, I never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, but, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. The f Did he just fucking r run, like, straight into, like, barbed wire? What is up with his, like, scars? <laughs> but anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but... You're on death row, right? Uh, okay. I I'm really, really sorry! You look so sad. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was strict, I tell you. A woman. She lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it. I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later... A policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. 
She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive. It, it, it's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. We're not going to figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. Y you were... Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lines then. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Ha, huh, that old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. I didn't say... So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Office, is, is here for me? No, 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 you, you got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine, an escaped death row convict for our first client. I also need to put my mic a bit closer. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Ha, huh, relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. R really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, He's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. G genius? Well, it's about to head. It's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. A solitary confinement cell for the con condemned must be the world's loneliest, loneliest place. I can't read. Ugh. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but now me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. Apparently that's his voice. The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, your honor. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Y yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fay. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. How old is he? He's not here! Oh, I'm the same age as Valerie. Interesting. So you're the new prosecutor everyone's talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. <laughs> Young people... I've already forgot his voice! <laughs> <laughs> Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. Do I have any? Oh, I just have this. Start with a knife in the back. Lovely. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. You got it, kitten. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor, it was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime, I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls th throw his young victim into the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. 
so Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you were just mentioned, that wouldn't be... Exactly, the victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha, I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha, the truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious the defendant the, the, the defendant is guilty. Attention! Wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word of choice or your tone of voice. Your word choice. Mm -hmm. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. He's doing the fun karma finger wiggle. I don't like that. Are you... You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. He still has all of his sass. Witness, state your name and occupation. I s do I have him here now? Yes. He's 20. Tiny baby. <laughs> But, like, look at his outfit. You can tell that's, like, Fun Karma inspired. Like, you can just tell. <laughs> you don't like it? You don't like his beige trench coat? <laughs> that is Fun Karma Jr. <laughs> Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe, I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir. I finally got promoted to the, to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am. You got any idea how much work it takes? What is it? You... You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart. It's aching for you. Gumshoe, please! Can we not? <laughs> can we not do this in court? Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Oh, okay, I got it. Come shoot, no. Now, detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawth Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir. I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there, on top of the bridge. Do I have some- I still have some chocolate. Or something on my controller, you know, whatever. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm, huh, I see. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Miss Redworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that he even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I am sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. God, I see so much of Fun Karma in him and I don't like it. I don't like it. Ugh. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I were some hoser. Detective. Proceed with your testimony. Um, yes, sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for, no for morning tea. Trust me and get ready.
On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hartthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the des designated time and met with Mr. Falls. <laughs> and she needs to get out more and spend time with people who aren't finger waggling pissy babies. Hmm? You're not wrong. That's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Okay, I said I wouldn't cheat, but fuck it. Let me go, press on first statement. <laughs> we love to cheat in games. Huh, well you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now will the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination, coming right up. Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep them trump if you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. I it's just cold in here. Courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right, especially for a beginner. I I don't need you to worry about me. I mean, I mean the defendant, the witness. Everyone's a beginner in here. Ha! Huh. You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you got, kitten. <laughs> It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up all na all last night watching. There we go. This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What? The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in her desk. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Mm hmm. Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Ha. Huh. Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Does excessive beard growth run in the judge family? It's a fake beard, obviously. What does it say about... A hotshot lawyer, my senior and rival at the office. A bit smug. Okay. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's the detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said what it said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Hmm. Hmm. Now press. <laughs> yeah, I got the victim's note. Okay, I wasn't sure. Mr. Falls had a card then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? N no, no, of course not. He was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm. Car thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Wow, that... that doesn't look too comfortable. The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ha. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. I can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. She is also dead. <laughs> the condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? It's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? 
What did the defendant have to say about this photo? Apparently I did something. What do you always says, ma'am? I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing? I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole the car. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says... Uh... Sorry. I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Hey, ooh. Oh yeah, that's what I did. I hit it by accident, and then present the victim's notes. Wait, what, is, what should I say? Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Terry was nothing. <laughs> Witness! What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I I'm sorry, I, I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is- this is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Uh -huh. You should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Hmm. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Oh no. Come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. How old is Mia? We don't get to know how old Mia is. Detective! Y yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Y yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like. Thus, this special request. Ah, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? Ah, she's 24. She can drink coffee? <laughs> I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it. My little brother has been drinking coffee since 12. Yeah, I <laughs> think. Mm, yeah. The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Miss Regworth, what do you have to say about this? <sighs> and I see the defense is a little lacking. The scarf you are searching so desperately for. Is it this one, perchance? Huh. Where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal, personal satchel. It's the safest place, I know. Hm, <laughs> that hotshot sure has a flair for the dramatic. It's not exactly white, as the caller requested. But as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Huh. It looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. The cuter Edgeworth. He was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Now, if the attorney for the defense is finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? He looks so tidy. His face is, like, so much more younger. Well, Phoenix isn't present in this case, considering it's, like, six years ago. But he is reading about this case currently. Huh. <sighs> Oh yeah, I would like to wrap this scarf around my smarmy, his smarmy little neck. Very good. Now if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business. The prosecution moves to establish conclusively and with hard evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on that bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. 
Ah, uh, everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. Genius, huh? Actually, there is an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Hmm, now looking at this photo... You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It's about a 40 feet... 40 foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Aha! A potential witness! <laughs> so why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel them to testify. <laughs> I like how you're here just converting. <laughs> converting imperial numbers. <laughs> To the metric system. Because that's the one that makes sense. Anyways. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Alright. So as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Uh -huh. The truth is coming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. N not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? The good measurement system. The only one. The only one that's worth anything. This and then the crime photo, apparently. Lamau. <laughs> Her about 67 banana size. <laughs> so at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? Yeah, and fog too. Just a generally soggy atmosphere. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo of the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions that day? I mean, her coat is dry, isn't it? Naturally, the answer is... Right here. The victim's... coat? As far as I can see, there is nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. There were the con what were the condi conditions on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen on down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Nat, that, that's exactly right. The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard would hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet, but not muddy muddy. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? surface of the bridge, huh? Huh. A real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. Neither would a real woman. Of course I can. Here, here is the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was all muddy. The scarf. The evidence is 
this scarf. Ha! It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means that the bridge was obviously covered in mud. No. I can't be outwitted by this novice bim Same to you, buddy. Did you just call him a bimbo? <laughs> a himbo? Miles Edgeworth himbo confirmed? <laughs> Miss Face assertions make assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this, in this case may be, shall we? Uh, Alright. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha. Huh. You're doing pretty well, poor little kitten. M Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk. The witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim. Or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? False evidence. It's one of those three. Hmm, huh, what you said just now. I'm not sure I like that. That wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over the hair that said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into court. We won't let him. We'll ex expose this evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. Yes! False evidence in the case is... The witness testimony. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the, de the, de the, de the, de the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. Sorry, that was that was the other <laughs> that was the other judge. Hmm, that's true. Ha. It's not just true, it's the truth. If there was a truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy wonder over here would have over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. As well, as well. <laughs> well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. <sighs> you should brace yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness. What is your name and occupation? You. Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double double and a, do and a dozen donut holes. 
I feel like I want to hurry up and out, up and hand down the verdict just to have a bite. Hey, hey, not so fast! <sighs> As I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Do not eat the girl. Miss Fay, you could learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? Huh? Eh. Hey. Yes, my dear. This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Mm -mm. Not at all. It's no trouble at all. Now then, may we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster. I'm a college student. A freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo. Is that accurate? <laughs> Can you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face like, like that? Huh? But it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalize you. Uh-oh. I don't like the turn this is taking. Is she staring at me? Um, and you would be... Huh? I'm the defense attorney. My name is Mia Fey. I see. So you are. Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Y yes, Your Honor. I'll do my best. I... I was using my camera to take some pictures of white flowers. Then I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. And right after that, I called the police. Don't ask about the shawl, okay? Hmm. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help. Help. <laughs> would be of help here. Um, I was standing right over here. She's so innocent. Even the shawl defies gravity. I was standing in a beautiful field, surrounded by tall cliffs. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. Oh ho ho! What a cute camera, just like its owner. Huh. Alright then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. Miss and the witness's photo. The judge ready to commit assault for this lady. <laughs> witness, wait, how old is she actually? 19. Sir, can we fucking not? <laughs> when you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Uh. All I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testify that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally, that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see... The photo we presented was the only one there was. Didn't we already, like, figure it out? Like, he's, like, way younger than you expected. Like, he's, like, 50 or something. So... He's in his, like... Mid 40s, I guess. In this, anyways. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Oh, this is younger brother. Then it's even worse. <laughs> and he's like in his late 30s, maybe. Uh, 
I mean, not not worse in like the the the, the age difference way, but like worse than like he's aging really badly. <laughs> Considering he looks like he's 60 when he's like, like 30s. Hmm. Hmm. No. Oh. Huh. Um, my apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. Yeah, I know. I read it. I read it myself. He can certainly downplay a situation, can't he? I- I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I, am. Um, I used it all up. The film, I mean. You ran out of film? Uh, this photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all of the photographs she took that- she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself playing among the wild flowers. The witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. So you took photos of yourself? Hmm. Huh. I remember taking some photos of myself once too. Please, no details! <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you implying? <laughs> Who is the judge sexting? <laughs> it seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. Wait, just a minute. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more photo more pictures, eh? Mr. Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Oh the judge <laughs> Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Very well then, let's get back to the cross-examination. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. Ha. Huh. It looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting, getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. The victim turned it around and tried to run away, but she only got about 10 yards before she was stabbed in the back. What the fuck is 10 yards? Who the f Listen, if you'd use feet, I'd understand it. But considering you used yards, I have even less knowledge about what the hell a yard is. How much is 10 yards? <laughs> Fleur. <laughs> Anyways, I'm supposed to present the, the map. Attention! 51 bananas. Ah, yes. Or 9 meters. So it's kind of close to a meter, I guess? I mean, not quite. It's like under a meter, but... Then why not say 20 feet? <laughs> Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? What? But I... But I... I just... Miss Faye, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? Simple. Just take a look at the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run... Well then... She, she would have hit a dead end. You said ten yards, but she couldn't have ran even five. Because Dusky Bridge is collapsed on that side. I said that really weirdly. I apologize. What does this all mean? It's very simple, Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. 
This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court? Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What did you say? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So you're saying... I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair... There's no evidence that can prove that the bridge was broken during the incident. That's... Ridiculous! You can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Huh. 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 That guy is good. Huh? What do you mean? You planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, alright. A diagram of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? Coward. Well, Miss Faye, it seems you once again made a reckless ac accusation. I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... It's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Y yes, sir. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm, witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I I'm still shaken up. If he accepts this testimony as it is, we're finished. Don't say that! Oh well, maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Alright, Miss Faye, your cross-examination, if you please. Contradiction is staring you straight, staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. Press. Do, do. Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. A surprising number of people go up there. But it's February, right? And it was raining that day, correct? There is also a small temple and a channeling dojo there. You know those monks? They just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found at any time. Besides, the witness is merely reporting what she witnessed with her own eyes. Statement 3. killer not wanting his victim to be found, I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. It was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. Those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Huh. In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. If ten murders were to occur at the same spot above the Eagle Rig River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. Order! 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 I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Faye. But I must admit, it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Oh. 
Oh well, Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> How sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would like would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. Miss Faye, it seems that your assertion is without merit after all. Objection! But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Objection! Surely you can't deny that. The body was found in the trunk of the car. And that's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Ugh. Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I'll, I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who is he talking about? Alright, I'll do my best. Uh, there it is. And then, witness photo. Objection! Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. Oh yeah, she said, the killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. I forgot to read that. Done what? You made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your very own eyes? Y yes And? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you need to see the- if you try to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. <gasps> That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. Th that's right. It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry. But we all know that's fucking bullshit. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location that the photo was taken from. Your own photo tells the whole star story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge. But the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Ha! Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. But still you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. Order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled in, in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Objection. Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Hmm, yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. To err is human, to forgive divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. What? Th that's not fair! Ha. Huh. Save the tears for later, kitten. M Mr. Armando! Don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. B but... But that wasn't fair! Okay, kitten. You need to relax, then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. So tell me, how did she know that? 
How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Ha! Ah. Well, Miss Foster, until you can explain how you knew that, you're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain that he broke into the trunk. Because... because there were marks left on the trunk lid. I'm certain they were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. It's true. He certainly looks like scratch marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just said. Is there a contradiction in there somewhere? Doesn't work. According to Sherlock, that just makes me a drunk. <laughs> My god, that fucking pissed me off. Oh my god, I remember that. Oh. Melissa Foster. It looks like you've finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers. But even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is, when? When did you get, the, get a chance to see those scratches? Finally. Finally got her. I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. But perhaps it would be b faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Sir, your your honor, there is only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was she put the corpse in herself. I mean, I do that all the time, and I'm sober as all hell. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's only one way that the witness had the chance to see those scratches. Yes, what is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of the car was... Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I could never... It was the man in the prison garb. He's the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Mr. Falls had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Which means that the key would have still been in, in the ignition. Oh, I, I see. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Falls that put the body in the trunk. Preposterous to even suggest that the witness put the body in there. If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident, incident occurred. We already know that at the time, she was taking photographs. Now is your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a minute tripod. Hmm. Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field, as she claimed? Well, if she really did use the camera's auto-timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly, she was not in the field. Hmm. Would the defense please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. There was Miss... Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? And answering that question will also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then... Please answer this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Uh, yeah. Naturally, the witness was right here. But that's... But that's where the victim, Miss, Haw Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Order! 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 Miss Faye! What on earth? 
Your Honor, if I may? After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine! Of course Mr. Fallsmith would met with the vict victim! The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. Wh what? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. M me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne ve very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in the federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You are just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? Got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like because of the victim's smoke. note. Oh, have fun, have fun uh, cutting your mushrooms. <laughs> Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. Namely, this muddy scarf. <laughs> it was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? <laughs> eh, uh, where's Mr. Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Huh. Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well, this court is in recess. Ooh. Yeehaw. That was the first part. We have one part left. Mr. Falls, I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get... We've got to get past. God, I can't read. Uh, obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. We need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student, a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. 
Mr. False, in that case. Tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago. I dream of it. Every day. This picture, it reminds me everything. Bridge looks same, just like then. Five years ago, like it could fall apart. Fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha. Huh. Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true. It, I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Hmm, that's, a, that's a name we recognize, isn't it? Y your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? The girl. The girl, let her go! Shut up! C come closer, and I kill her! Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. First I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong! No protect sister! Valerie betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping too. Make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Sir, how old were you five years ago? Twenty? And didn't they say that Dahlia was fourteen? Yeah, that's fucking gross, all right. Also, the fact that he calls her my teen angel. Wow. Get him convicted for that. <laughs> Ugh, did he actually say my teen angels? He's seen one too many soap operas. I do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says. Hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We sent to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamonds. Tell him to make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew... She knew a detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, alright? In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman... That woman, Valerie, she do it for real! She shoot at me for real! Me and Dahlia! I was shot in arm. Dahlia. She jumped in river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. The woman. She betrayed me. Man, Terry Falls. He killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. Nom nom's the ball. <laughs> These five years, all I wonder is why. Why? 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 Also, hi. Welcome, Bengi. Thank you for dropping by once again. Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. That's why you called her. 
You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. Don't worry about being too late. I know you're busy. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls. Where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really, I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? McDay, on the bridge. Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone. With Dahlia. Gone. Forever. Into Eagle River. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You come back in now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? I never found her. My sweet Dahlia. I never found her. Swallowed by river. Gone. Dahlia. My teen angel. Stop calling her your teen angel! <laughs> your teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. I was hoping that I remembered wrong, but no. No. I, I wasn't. B 14? I guess you were rubbing cradles before diamonds? My god. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two million. Man, no oh man. Angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a... It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to you've got to strike while the iron's hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. She was, um, six years younger than Terry Falls. Because he was 20 at the time. Considering he's like 25 now. Witness, are you feeling better? Y yes, your honor. I'll try my best. Hmm, you're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try and pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime, that's all. What possible reason could a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? Hi, Kanan! <laughs> Thank you for dropping by. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what he I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? <laughs> no, it's actually a hoodie with the... with ears. <laughs> But I guess you can't really see that well in the tiny frame. But yeah. Uh, yes, of course, I think. Ha, huh, you're still acting as tame as a kitten. Kitten. Mr. Armando, listen, a lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me? May I speak, Mr. Judge? 
Oh, of course. Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. Judge, please, no. I'd like... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm. <clears throat> I see you're such an honest and upstanding young lady. It looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her. Click! She lights right up. Very well then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. I... I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, college I never... I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer you tes who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a ho terrible, horrible monster. Hmm, out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet! Somehow, I have to tie her to this case. Is this... and just press, I guess. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why she harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. Oh, he harbored so much anger. Sorry. <laughs> My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client, you forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Press harder. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then they probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Falls' reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Have it edited to testimony. Yes. Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove the point. Hmm. Huh. No, that's not why I... Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. Guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Objection. Witness. I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Oh, you are talking about this scarf right here, eh? Yes, that's it! The scarf the policewoman was wearing! I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me! Oh! Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. Mix the reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is because of the victim's nude. 
Witness, have you ever seen this note? N note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There is no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Falls' instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear a white scarf for identification. White scarf? Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. <laughs> well, Miss Foster? No? Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The per person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, Kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Plug in my phone. So it won't die on me. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name. Right there. What's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne? Ah, <sighs> Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. Attention! You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago, when she fell off a dusky bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old f five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster, I believe that's the same age you are. Attention! Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Huh, nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hidden run arsonist. I, I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now is my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm. Hmm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I... 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 I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't... You don't mean... Yes, the, prosec the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Are you sure about that? Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did you say? <laughs> it looks like the kid knew. He knew our true identity from the get-go. No way! But then why- You hadn't revealed her secret. He wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. 
Let me introduce you to the victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well, but, well, as you can see. Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? Their fingers? I mean, to be fair, Edgeworth is younger here. He is like 20. So that would explain why he doesn't have those yaoi hands yet. And that has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of a victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. The design? What do you, what, what do you mean? Whose fingers are you actually talking about? Hold on. Really, Miss Faye, I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. God, is my fucking neighbor. Go away, no one likes you. <laughs> At any cost. How dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. Huh. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that, he, that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Not sure if I ever mentioned their fingers looked like sausages to me. Do you mean Edgeworth's fingers? Miss Fay, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? Assertion, I mean. What possible reason would the wit this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well. You see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, Kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Who was that? That must have been... Oh, that wasn't me, it was this guy, this crazy coffee addict. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Huh. What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Huh. I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. To me? <sighs> the rashness of youth, how charming. This coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? <laughs> the story starts after Terry Falls escaped. Called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia, tell her this time. The whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the whole, to the world the whole truth. And the whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. Terrific story, Miss Faye. I feel like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dolly and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know the secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? 
Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things. Such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. <laughs> Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Y yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Let me just... Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started it started all over again. And we're to believe after all that she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Miss Regworth. Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha. Huh. If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up, we've still got, it, got that info, that ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged... That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by. Yeah, me and Dahlia, and Valerie too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. And then we go here and present the skin bridge map. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But, but it's true. I felt a push on, on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that's impossible. I impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you have claimed, instead of being carried away by the river, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Objection! Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. GG. You're right. Even the wi if the events occurred just as the witness has testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Ah, uh, I, I, ah. Uh, you see, I. It's a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the, that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. That's true. She would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Well, the 
that you mention it. I do remember now when I fell off the bridge. My skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious! He almost hit his gavel in, in, in time with the music he got us. <laughs> order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss, Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. So impossible about it. Oh no, that was a fucking awful frame. Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Oh nope, I, I I chose the wrong one. Sorry. Even when following <laughs> a guide, I fuck up. It's it's this one. That's the one I meant to choose. I don't know why I mixed them up. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wire supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! But, but let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. Ah. And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Y yes, it's ridiculous! My sister was there to help me. She had her gun and, gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would, but that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of Eagle River. It's the... It's a diamond. Yeah. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. No. It can't be. Yes, Dahlia had it planned from the beginning. The two million dollars, she was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. With the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. That's... that's simply ridiculous! Order! 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 Y your Honor, five years ago the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. And there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping. Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? 
on the day of the murder. After receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister, Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. I'm planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth. She wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Who is that laughing at a time like this? Uh, forgive me, it's just hilarious. Witness, is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? E evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. W well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that... Hmm. Well, Miss Faye, I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye? Are you stupid or something? Mm -hmm. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject their assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. Huh. Without evidence, the trial is over. Who decided that? M Mr. Armando! Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out what, that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. T testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Fall's stolen car and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Y yes that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? Terry falls himself. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. Defendant. There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne, or whether it was in fact her younger sister, Dahlia, disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is... Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Regworth, what's your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Uh, um, I don't believe it. No way. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. False. I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. False, there is only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne, or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia. Dahlia. Did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised. Never ever betray each other. Terry. Oh, sorry. Terry! Dahlia! It, it 
It's true. You're alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The real truth. I... I believed in you. You shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But... There is one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. The... Alia. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls. Yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness. I'm sorry. I apologize. Water. Please. Water. Hmm. Can't talk. Need water. Huh. Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitterer than hell itself. At day, 4pm, I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, and she left. That was... that was Valerie, not my Dahlia. Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you wanted to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You, Kitten. I think. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well, then I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Huh? No, I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo, it's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? That's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Um, Mr. Falls? Please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. Got there around four o'clock, it's true. I... I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to this special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under a base of tree there. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle on... On a necklace is your memento? I mean, it's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock. But he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. Huh? M Mr. Falls? That's enough. Please. Witness? I promised her five years ago. If it ever happens, that we can't trust each other no more. 
then we're supposed to drink bottle. Oh. No! Stop the trial! Your Honor, we need a recess. I, I was stupid. Couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No, we are so close. Just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. We need a hospital. <laughs> Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls. Mr. Ar Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Mr. Falls! And so my first trial ended, suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul I thought it never healed. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person. The true criminal. Dahlia Hawthorne. She left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. Unforgivable, that witch. M Mr. Armando. We were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. Listen. <laughs> It'd be like that. You were just a little too soft, kid. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Did you get it? You can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando! No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, we always fade over time, and you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. This whole court needs therapy. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict was that ultimately was ultimate that was ultimately handed down to her was guilty of course naturally when the verdict was read she had a perfect angelic smile on her face it was finally all over last well, at least that's what i thought at the time unfortunately i couldn't have been more wrong been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Group therapy session. Okay. <laughs> that was that case. We're two two hours in. Perfect. Can start start the final case. This is fucking insanity too. Like just Oh my god. Let's go. Just the way that like all the cases are like interconnected except for like the previous case, I guess. Shichisto. A treasured Kurain village heirloom whose name means seven branched sword. It is said that this sacred sword represents life itself.
Though the branches may appear to be infinite, the choice is limitless. Like our destinies, the sword comes to but one end, one merciless point. And when the silver cord, the fragile thread that binds us to this world is severed, The illusion is revealed as a, and the implacability of fate is finally laid bare. She's so evil she made my computer crash! <laughs> hey Nick! Yeah? What is it? You know how I've got spiritual powers unlike you? Um, sure. You are a spirit medium, after all. But just like you, if I don't keep my powers sharp, they get dull, right? Um, I guess so, yeah. Glad you agree. Okay, Pearly, you're up. Pearls? So, that's why we need to go on a special spiritual hotspot tour, Mr. Nick. Huh? I'm lost. What's this magazine you're shoving in my face? It's a New Year's issue of Old Cult. Winter Spiritual Location Special. Oh. Pearls look so happy. Maximize your spiritual powers with just one night of intensive training. Oh, it sounds too good to be true. I'll say. Sounds more like a scam to me. It's at a spiritual retreat called Hasakura Temple. It's way up in the mountains, and I bet it's nice and cold. Just perfect for training. No, I definitely don't want to go. You know, I think I've heard of this temple before. It's a famous channeling dojo. It's hard for even real spirit mediums like us to make reservations up there. Reservations? For a temple? Are you serious? Don't worry! I've already made special reservations just for us! Yeah! And I signed up for the special course! That's nice, and the timing couldn't be better. Since we don't have a case right now anyway. Alrighty then, it's settled! Well, come on! Don't just stand there, start packing your stuff! Yes, Mr. Nick, you'd better start packing your stuff. Huh? M me? Why do I have to go? Well, we have to be accompanied by someone over 20 years old. Hey, I don't have anything to do with spirit power. The only thing I can channel is TV. So, um, is there a heated pool at this Hasakura temple? No, but you can sit under a freezing waterfall. Sorry, but I think I'll pass. I hate cold places. What? No way! How can you be so selfish? Come on, Mr. Nick! Look at this place! Doesn't it look beautiful? Nope, not going. I'm gonna be nice and toasty at home. What the... What is it, Mr. Nick? Let me see that magazine. This nun. Is she a friend of yours or something, Nick? This girl. It's... My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. I just want to say, it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. Honestly, how can how can any woman ever count on you for anything? You disgust me. But it can't be. She was found guilty and should still be in prison. Mr. Nick? I'll go. Huh? Sakura Temple. I said I'll go. Yay! Isn't that great, Pearly? Yes! Well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Nick. You do anything for Mystic Maya, right? Even walk over burning coals, right? Dahlia Hawthorne. I knew there was no way she could possibly be at the temple. But I just had to see for myself. Had to be see? <laughs> okay. Who this nun really was. Boo! It, it's so c cold here, Nick. Phoenix's trust issues. Yeah, you know. 
when your ex-girlfriend turns out to be a fucking murderer, it it it, it kind of gives you trust issues. Maybe you should put on something warmer for a change. Well, it's supposed to be c c cold. It's tra training. Achoo! Her teeth are chattering so loudly. It's all I can do to make out what she's saying. Wow, Mystic Maya. So this is the famous Hasakura Temple. P -p Pearly. I I I I I okay. Another one for the court court group therapy. Well, well, well. How nice to see you here. Welcome to our temple. Oh, th thank you. Achoo! Oh, my, my, my. Thank you for coming all this way. Come now, come now. You must have been cold. What's with the past tense? You're freezing into human. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Well, we are high up in the mountains after all. In any case, we shouldn't speak here. Please follow me inside. Thank you. I was starting to think... Oh, yes, yes, I almost forgot to introduce myself. I'm the head nun here at the temple. My name is Bikini. B -b -b Bikini? That's right. Actually, that's my temple name. What do you think? It's a tradition to have one, and I wanted something that has a nice image to it. So I thought, why not choose a bikini? Besides, it makes me seem younger. <laughs> it certainly does. Oh, I signed up for your special course. Well, my, my, my. Quite brave of you, considering how cold it is. The young people can be so reckless with their health. Don't blame me if you become one of those to channel. <laughs> reckless? Wahaha? <laughs> Maybe you should take it easy tonight, Mystic Maya. We can come back another day. <laughs> You went through all that trouble to get... Yes, yes, yes. That's right. You've come all this way, so please enjoy yourselves. And there's still time before supper. So why don't you have a look around? Uh... I have to talk to her. That's right. Um, so what's a channeling dojo anyway? Oh my, my, my. You don't even know that? Forgive him, sister, for he knows not what he- Well, well, well. Just call me Bikini and forget that sister part. A channeling dojo is basically a spiritual power trading ground. We have special holy items prepared here to help people boost their spiritual power. Uh, holy items? If you trade an entire evening surrounded by these items, ah, it's quite mysterious. The spiritual power of these items seem to envelop you. <laughs> Wow, she must have just gotten off the trolley from the land of make-believe. Um, so what exactly is the special course? You must be incredibly devoted to be interested in that at such a young age. It's a training session where you sit on a block of spirit ice and chant a spell. 30,000 times, all while being showered in freezing cold spirit water. Eh? Huh? It's February now, not right? You have to be careful this time of the year. If you don't watch it, you'll catch pneumonia or maybe even die of hypothermia. So be careful, you hear? <laughs> How am I supposed to be careful? Oh no! I knew I shouldn't have signed Mystic Maya up for this! Oh my god. Um, sister, about this picture. Well, well, look at that! I must say I look rather divine here, don't you think? Oh, um, yeah, unforgettable in every way. You mean it? Oh, I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> the makeup was pretty tough, but Iris helped me out. Iris? And the cute little girl in the photo. She looks just like me, doesn't she? We're just a small temple here, so she and I run the entire place. Really? That kind of sounds like fu Sorry to cut in, but... This Iris. Where is she right now? No, just listen to you. You haven't come all the way up here just to find a girlfriend, have you? <laughs> Pearls. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I had in mind at all. Anyway, Iris is in the inner temple preparing for this evening. Inner temple? Yes, yes, that's right. Iris will be back this evening. Why don't you go have a look at the main hall for now? <laughs> so she's in the inner temple, huh? The 
the main hall. I think it's even colder in here. Huh, it's the meat. Do you smell that? It smells like meat and gravy. Yeah, you're right. I guess it's post pot roast for tonight. Yum. Weird, I thought they would serve something a little more, well, traditional. What are you talking about, Nick? You think monks and nuns just sit around eating rice gruel all the time? Mystic Monk is right. Oh, I hope they, they're smashed potatoes, too. I love mashed potatoes. <laughs> what a cute little acolyte. Greetings to all of you. Oh, um, hello. Wow, this lady makes Maya look like 6.8 out of 10 on the weirdness scale. Your outfit! Did you come here for the special course too? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Actually, I'm... You, you're... 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 Do, do. How do it? How do you pronounce that? Hold on. Is there... Uh, A is currently... Uh... Let me look at her, uh, what's her Japanese name, I guess. It's some kind of French. Yeah, it's like Dunim, I believe. Oh my god. Names. Uh, name to name may be a play on pseudonym. It could be a combination of corruption of du, meaning to, and suffix nim. Yeah, so it's du, as in two. Cool, so it's Elise Dunim. Yes, that's right. You know of me. M my, my name is Pearl Fay. I I'm your biggest fan. Who is she, Nick? Hmm. I see it now. Zvari, a fortune teller. I've got all your books, Miss Dunim. <laughs> what a sweet thing to say. And please call me Elise. Um, books? Mr. Nick, don't you know anything? Don't you even know who this is? Well, um, an author, maybe? Yes, and an illustrator of picture books. Picture books, huh? Oh, now I get it. <laughs> um, I'm sorry I didn't know who you are. I don't get a lot of chances to really enjoy picture books. It's all right. I take no offense to that. My books are nothing but simple stories for children. They're really beautiful pictures too, Miss Elise. Your books always make me feel as if my heart has been purified. <laughs> it makes me feel very happy to hear you say that. I do have to admit, she certainly seems like a kind, sensitive lady. Miss Elise, I won an award last year... Oh, Miss Elise won an award last year for her book, The Magic Bottle. Yes, a friend of mine secretly submitted a story I had written to a publisher. They liked it so much that they asked if it was a right, for, right to make it into a book. Wow, it must have been a really great story. Maybe I should try to write a children's book too. If I do, you can secretly send it to a publisher for me, Nick. Recently, I've accepted a sort of apprentice, you might say. An apprentice? He calls himself Loris, Loris Dunim. I believe he's off doing some landscape sketches now. On Loris's behalf as well, I'd like to thank you for your support. Of course, Miss Elise. Anything for you. <laughs> Oops, wrong one. Why come here? Um, why don't you come to Hasakura Temple, Miss Elise? Are you here to do some spiritual training? <laughs> no, that's not it. I'm actually here to gather materials for a new book I'm working on. Oh, I can't wait to read it! Pearls is completely taken with her. 
I wanted to do a book with a more Japanese feel to it this time. So is that why you're dressed like you are? And the children have a certain image of me in their minds. I don't want to disappoint them. What can I say? She's really a sweet lady. Celise, you're dressed up like a mountain nun. Yes, the good people here were kind enough to let me borrow this. I'm wearing training clothes underneath my robe as well. I want a staff like that. You like the crystal sphere? It's real amethyst, you know. Maybe we'll find one like that up here on this mountain. Good luck, Nick. I know you'll find me one. Well, you'll have to excuse me now. I have to go help with the dinner preparations. You mean you're cooking dinner tonight? That's right. Would you like to help too, Pearl? Yes, yes. I want to help with whatever I can. Pearl looks like she just won the lottery. Oh, I'll help too then. No, it's fine. Please don't worry about it. Feel free to relax and explore the area with your friend. Huh? But... Oh, yes. Please take this. I think it will be of help to you. It's a map of the area. We wouldn't want you to... To get lost now, would we? Hmm. This seems... Familiar. Where have we seen this before? The inner temple. There it is. On the other side of the bridge. Well, if you insist, I guess we'll take this chance to go check out the inner temple. The other temple. Okay, I'll see you till later then. Remember, you're not allowed to fight. Come on, Nick. Let's go. At least we'll stay warm if we keep moving. Pearl is a littlest pet shop figure. Hold on. Speaking of, actually, I'm gonna just... I have one. I have a tiny one. It was my favorite. I lost it. Like once I I lost it. It's so cute. I had so many. So not as as many as my my friend. Yeah. I lost it like behind um my bed once. And I found it one day and I was so happy. And then I placed it on um, my mom's fireplace. Because it was like made of metal, so the magnet worked, you know. But then she she started the fireplace and it got like slightly burned. <laughs> so it has like a little burn mark. You probably can't. It, you can kind of see, I guess. The head is kind of flat because... It got stuck to the actual oven. <laughs> <laughs> no, its head is melted a little bit. Yeah, but uh, it's fine because I just took like a file, like a nail file, I guess, and just filed away because the magnet thing had also like melted a tiny bit. So I just like filed it down. So that I can make it sit again. <laughs> it couldn't do that before. But now it can sit. Ah! Oh, my hand isn't straight. It can sit. <laughs> <laughs> the sur fire survivor kitty. Yeah, so. Anyways, back to the game. <laughs> huh? Where did Sister Bikini go? I guess she went to the inner temple to go help that other nun out. All right, I think her name is Iris? Yeah, that was it. I want to find out who Iris really is, but I'm scared of what I'll find. Wow, look at this broken down old bridge, Nick. Yeah, and look at that big canyon below us. There's a river down there. It looks like it's flowing real fast. What's wrong, Nick? 
You look like you've seen a ghost. I'm just not very good with heights. Oh, hey, I've got it. Maybe I should face your fear and try hurling yourself off the edge. <laughs> oh, wow, that's... That's very nice, Maya. You know, one, two, three, jump! It might be just what you need to get over your fear of heights. Yeah, death is a real good way to overcome phobias, all right? Anyway, it sure looks like a rickety bridge. I can't argue there. It's probably why it's called Dusty Bridge. Read it again, Maya. It says Dusky Bridge. Well, it's practically the same thing. Anyway, the inner temple is just up ahead, right? So let's go and check it out. Uh, why isn't there another way across? <laughs> Didn't know Maya was a prophet. Oh, Frank was shaking like jello in an earthquake. And at least half of the wood on that rickety bridge was rotting, I bet. <laughs> Maya, please! Oh no, Maya is my brother in law with my bird phobia. <laughs> I feel so sorry for you, dude. Not to mention the last part only had like one board left on it. What's wrong with you? Your face is all green. Can you not pick on me for a second? I'm still trying to get over the shock that we made it safely across that death trap. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit surprised too. Yikes, that temple is in bad shape. It looks like it, it could collapse at any time. I guess people don't use it too often. I like how we can't even fucking see it. <laughs> is this really where you're going to train tonight? That has to be it. It's kind of creepy around here, like a ghost might jump out at you or something. Spirit medium afraid of ghosts. Isn't it ri ironic, don't you think? Man, look at this place. It's just a tiny, freezing cold room. So this is where you'll both be training, huh? Huh? What do you mean both? I'm the only one. Really? But I thought... Curly's just a little kid. She couldn't handle this kind of intense training. So says the girl who can barely hear over her... Who I can barely hear over her teeth chattering. Anyway, the real training room must be behind that door over there. Hmm, yep. Definitely getting the feeling it's back there. Even I can sense that there's something supernatural about the cavern behind that door. Um. Excuse me, but who are you? <gasps> You're... Hi there. We're just looking around since we're going to be staying here tonight. Is something wrong? Uh, uh, no. It's nothing. I wonder why she's spaced out like that, don't you, Nick? Uh, did you say something, Maya? Not you too, Nick. I... My name is Iris. I'm one of the nuns here at this temple. I'm Maya Faye. It's a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is mine. Oh, uh... Please excuse me. I have some um chores to attend to. She sure is beautiful and a bit spacey, I guess. I guess she ju she's just not used to talking with urban sophisticates like us. Nick, that girl. It, it can't be, but oh, I'm supposed to examine here. Hanging scroll. Oh. A hanging scroll. It doesn't look that old either. Oh. Ah! What is it? Why did you scream like that? This scroll. It. It's my mother. Wh what? It's Misty Fay, the master of the Kurayan School of Channeling. Are Are you sure? Yes. The crest is at the top of the scroll. It's a special mark of the master of our tradition. So that's what the mark means. What is it? N nothing. It's just that I last saw her over 15 years ago. 
If it wasn't for that crest, I wouldn't have even known it was her. My own mother. And I can't even recognize her face. Maya. We managed to make it across Dusty Bridge. Nick, you look green. Are you feeling alright? Hey, what's wrong with you? Ever since we met Sister Iris at the training hall, you've been really quiet. Huh? Oh, um, sorry. Hey, you! Wait up! You think he's yelling at us? He must be. There's no one else around. Would you mind moving? You're standing right in my way! Ah! Hey! I know you! You're... Whoa! Sorry! Gotta run! See ya! Hey! Wait a minute! Oh, nice to meet you! I'm Larise Dunim. Liar! You're Larry! Your clothes may change, but you're still the butts! Shut up! I'm... I'm... Larise! And I'm just here to do a sketch of Dusky Bridge! So it really is our Larry. Not that I get why he's pretending to be someone else. So what are you doing with the last name Dunim? Well, I... I just... I wanted to start over again with a clean slate. A clean slate? You remember, don't you? Last time? The mask the mask case. After that, I started to realize I don't like this guy known as Larry Butts. And that's when I came across it, the Book of Destiny. The Book of Destiny? Do you mean... The Magic Bottle by Miss Elise Dunim. It's so beautiful, so moving, so, so gentle. <laughs> Larry is one of the mysteries of this universe. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> My heart felt cleansed. I, I was saved by a children's book. Maybe I should buy a copy of the magic bottle. Wow, Larry would make a great book salesman. I really want to get that book now too. He's the most wonderful person I've ever met. I'd follow her anywhere. Well, she certainly is a very elegant lady. You see? You see? Here's a photo I took of her in secret. Larry. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful photo. That's not taken very much in secret. That's a pose if I've ever so if I've ever seen one. You want a copy, don't you? It's okay. I just happen to have made extra prints, sir. <laughs> Children's books are life saving. I mean, I'm aware. And where was... Where was Roald Dahl from anyways? Wasn't he like... Isn't he like the... Yeah, he had Norwegian parents, that's what it is. I know there was something like that. So it's kind of hard to imagine you as a picture book illustrator. So tell the truth, you must have some kind of ulterior motive, right? What are you talking about? I don't... I don't trust anyone anymore, especially not women. Talk about a bad case of denial. Anyway, can you even draw well enough to make a picture book? Art isn't, on isn't only about technical skill, you know. It's also about having a pure heart. That's why I'm asking, can you draw well enough to make a whole book? Hmm. 
Now that you mention it, I wonder. It looks like you still have some doubt in your heart. It's true, I do, but when I first saw her, I felt it. Something inside me ended and something else began. Oh, Larry, it sounds like you've fallen in love with Miss Elise the Nim. No, you're wrong. It's not her. It's the other girl. Other girl? Uh-oh. I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, yeah. Her. My little Iris. She's really pretty. This girl. She's perfect. She's exactly my type. I wonder if she would model for me. I want to draw a portrait of her. Yeah, you always liked those model types, didn't you, Larry? Hey, wait a sec. Didn't you say you were swearing off women? Huh? Yeah, that's right. Of course I have. I have, basically, but... But... But Iris is different. I feel like... I feel like I still have one chance left at the dream. This guy will never change. Everyone! Hey, Pearly! Dinner preparations are complete. Please come quickly to the main hall. All right, I can't wait to dig in, Pearly. I'm going to go to the inner temple and call Sister Iris. I also want to have a look at where Mystic Maya is going to be training. Boy, am I stuffed. Are you sure it's alright to eat that much before your training? Well, this kind of training is a battle of endurance. Mystic Maya, please don't do anything that might put your health at risk. <laughs> no pain, no gain, I guess. Aww, I'm so worried about you. Well, 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 let's not dilly-dally shilly-shally. You must get ready for tonight. Good luck, Maya. Alright, here I go. See you all tomorrow, I guess. Iris, please ring the bell at... 10 for lights out, alright? Yes, Sister Bikini. And then after you ring the bell, I want you to come join us at the training hall. I understand, Sister Bikini. Maya and Bikini really seem excited about this training thing tonight. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Well, um... If you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. Really? I'd love to. I am... Um, I'm not very good at reading. <laughs> well then, would you like to practice reading with me? I'd love to. Pearls is absolutely smitten with Mr. Nim. So Larry, what are you going to do? Huh? Me? Um, well... I'm just gonna hang out in my room. I can't stand the cold at all. I totally hear you there. So, for example, how do you read this? It says, gravely. It's kind of a tough word. Oh, okay. What about this word? That's another tough one. It says, roast. What kind of a book is she reading anyway? Well, I'm going to go wash the dishes and help clean up. I'll go visit you when I'm done, Miss Elise. Yes, her name is Sister Bikini. I love her so much, honestly. Well, not much to do except head to my room and huddle under the covers, I guess. Ugh, it's a whole different type of cold up here in the mountains. Uh, why couldn't the nearest bathroom be just a little closer to my room? Mr. Wright? Yeah! Oh, no, it's you. I wasn't sure who it was. Oh, uh, Mr. Nim, are you going to use the bathroom too? Um, no, but have you seen Pearl? No, but not since after dinner. I thought she said she was going to go to your room. I know, but she never showed up. I'm going to go look for her. Excuse me. Miss Elise de Nim, a woman as mysterious in origin as her last name. But the really mysterious one is... Ah! Sister Iris! Good evening. The really mysterious one is this girl. Um, are you on your way to the bathroom too, Mr. Wright? I can't let this chance pass me by. I should try to talk with her. Maybe get some answers. Um, 
your sister Iris, right? Yes. So, um, when did you come to Hazakura Temple? I don't remember. Ever since I was a small child, the temple has been my home. So you've never left? Well, I don't have any family left to take care of me. Sister Bikini, I've come to think of her as my real mother, as it were. I see. But you're... Didn't you go to college? And maybe enroll in the Ivy University Literature Department? No, I never had an interest in going to a big university like that. My training is all the education I need. I... I see. But... Once in a while, when I get the chance, I make a trip to the nearby town. I can use a computer and a cell phone too. That's not exactly something worth bragging about. But I don't see any psyche locks. So I guess that means she's not lying. Please don't stare at me like that. What kind of a place is this anyway? I heard it's for training to increase your spiritual power or something like that. And it seems awfully crazy to normal people like you. Well, I have to admit it is a whole different world up here. I'm glad to hear you say that. Huh? Talking with dead people, who does it help anyway? I hate it. R really? So then why stay in a place like this? Huh? Is something wrong? I didn't realize it was so late. I have to go and ring the bell for lights out. I guess it's almost 10 now, huh? Um, is it right? Yes? If it's all right with you, I would like you to have this. But this is your hood. It has the power to protect you from evil spirits. Come to think of it, Sister Bikini was wearing one of these too. I pray for your safety on this dark, cold night. I'm sorry, but I must bid you good night. Wait a minute, Sister Iris. Y yes? Just now, you called me by my name. You said Mr. Wright. How did you know my name? I never introduced myself to you. Th that's... Sister Iris, please tell me the truth. You and I... Have we ever met before? Five. I Iris! I want to see a picture of Phoenix in that hood. Oh, it, it's almost ten. Perhaps we can speak again tomorrow. So my hunch was correct. She does know me. I'll have to try to talk with her again tomorrow. I think he passed out. What the? That blood curdling scream came from the courtyard. That scream! I'm sure it came from around here. Ah! Someone's there! On the ground! Mr. Nim! I just stepped on something soft. You don't step on my tummy like that! Oh, what are you doing lying there in the snow? I was passed out! What do you think? So that blood curdling scream was you? Forget about that! Hurry up and call the police! Is there even a phone in the main hall? No, but we still get reception up here in the mountains. You must have a cell phone on you, right? I, um, I didn't bring it with me. Oh, you're useless! I mean, even Iris has a cell phone. We've got no choice. You'll have to use a public phone by Dusky Bridge. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Run as fast as you can! Y yes, ma'am. If you don't hurry, Iris will. Iris will! Don't look up too much about this case, okay? Because this is a very plot-heavy case. And it's very, very easy to get spoilers. <laughs> so, refrain from doing so. If you have to, you can ask Fleur, aka Hylian Meatball, because they have already played the trilogy, so they are well-versed in these games. But please do not look it up yourself unless you want to be spoiled and ruin this experience for you. <laughs> I guess... Huh. It's farther than I thought. The bridge is just up ahead. I have to go tell Maya what happened too. Ah! 
Dusky Bridge. It's burning down. What the heck happened? What are you doing here? Ah! Huh? What is it? Is it me? It, don't scare me like that, Larry. I almost had a heart attack. My name isn't Larry. It's the La Larice. Larry, hurry up and call the police. I'm going to the inner temple. D don't be stupid. The bridge is nothing but a burning wreck right now. Listen to me. There's been a murder here at Hasakura Temple. What? Murderer might have fled across this, across the bridge. I have to make sure Maya is safe. B but please call the police. I've gotta go. Get out of my way, Larry. Yeah, it's worth to watch the case and fall because this is a, this is an insane episode. This is like one of the best episodes. I'm pretty sure, like. It's like one of the highest ranked episodes. It's too dangerous. Nick, wait! I must have been crazy. I knew how dangerous it was, but I still went for it. Weakened even more by the fire, the rickety old bridge's plank snapped and gave way. And as I was swallowed by the eternal darkness that surrounded me, a final terrified scream rose up to pierce the frozen air of that harrowing night. <laughs> I think I am gonna make Fleur into um, a, a mod. However the hell I do that. Uh... How do I add them as mod? Wait, I know exactly. I know exactly how. But do I remember? That's the question. <laughs> Uh, is it? Nope. Mm. That did not work. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to... There we go. You're now a mod. So if you see any spoilers being talked about, uh, just delete. <laughs> Because I'm, I may not be able to do that myself at this point in time. I'm not going to finish this case today, by the way. Unlimited power. <laughs> well, you still have... S s there are still some limits, I guess. that be at this time of night? Yes, Edgeworth speaking. Edgy, get up! It's an emergency! Huh? Larry? Do you know what time it is? It's not Larry, it's Larice! Larice de Nim! This is nothing more than a terrible nightmare. I'll just roll over and... Wait, don't hang up! It's an emergency! It's Nick! He, he, he took a really nasty spill! Well, it wouldn't be the first time, so... I'm not joking! His life is in danger! What? What happened? Tell me! <laughs> it's about a guy with bad luck! He may already be dead! Anyway, you gotta come back! You're the only one that can help! My Iris! My beautiful Iris! She needs help! Alright, I don't know what's going on, but I'll be there as soon as I can. I'm at the detention center! Please, hurry! It's been one year since I left that country. I thought I wouldn't have to see him again for a while. 
Sounds like it won't be a pretty re reunion, as if I expected anything to change. You're late, Edgy! What took you so long? I don't want to hear it. I chartered a private jet to come as quickly as I could. I should have chartered a faster one. Anyway, just listen. Something happened to Miss Elise, and Nikki's, Maya, and Iris's bikini. Huh? Say something, Edgy! Before I came here, I stopped by the hospital and paid right a visit. I believe I have a better understanding of the situation than you at this point. The murder victim was the picture book author, Miss Elise Dunim. She was found by Wright and the head nun. The suspect is the temple's younger nun. Then later, while Wright was crossing the bridge, it broke and he fell into the river. What do we have here? see from right something about reading people's hearts what utter nonsense <laughs> later while right was crossing the bridge it broke and he fell into the river the hospital says that he'll need at least two days of bed rest yes that's right you got it but, but they arrested her my sweet little iris and here i was convinced he was the one that police had arrested however i still don't understand what these two items are for what are you talking about there are things Wright gave to me when I was leaving his room. This is the first. He said some nonsense about being able to see into people's hearts with this. And the other. He couldn't possibly be asking what I think he is, could he? I'm begging you! Iris's trial starts tomorrow! With Nick out of the picture, you're all I got left! You're the only one that can represent her! What did you just say? You know, represent, defend, what were you expecting? Why do you think I called you anyway? I'm a prosecutor, Larry. A prosecutor. Do you understand what I'm saying? A prosecutor is a lawyer who- Don't talk to me like a kid! I graduated from junior high, you know! Don't worry about it. I promise I won't tell. But I- I mean, I heard a paper badge had no problem fooling an entire court before. How could this country's judicial system have fallen into such decay? Please, Edgy! At least listen to her! Listen to Iris' side of the story! Sir Wright wasn't joking when he gave me this badge after all. Thank you for coming. My name is Iris. Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. I don't know if I can be of any help, but... I will at least hear what you have to say about the murder. Um... Mr. Wright! How is he? Mr. Laurie said that he... that he might even die. Fortunately, he will be fine. Larry, you moron. How could you say something like that? He was badly bruised when he hit the water, but otherwise he is unharmed. Thank goodness. But he's caught some kind of nasty cold. A cold? He's running a high fever and is drifting in and out of consciousness. I must be imagining things. This woman. I feel like I've met her before. Pardon me, Iris. I would like to sp ask you something, if you don't mind. I have the distinct feeling you and I have met before. It's be your imagination, Mr. Edgeworth. After all, I hardly ever leave Hasakura Temple. Hasakura Temple? What's that? And it's a place where those who wish to boost their spiritual power come to train. You need to undergo some very difficult training to release your inner spiritual power. Spiritual power? Did you go to that temple for that reason as well? No, I don't have any spiritual powers. I don't need them. In that case, what are you doing at the temple then? I have committed some sins. Sins that I need to pay for. That's why I'm there, and why I continue to train, to purify my soul. I want to ask you about last night, the night of the crime. Alright. I helped to clean up after dinner, and then went back to my room at about 8. Later, I left my room to ring the lights out bell at 10. Bell? We ring it at the same time each night. I see. And then? Uh, and then... I was told to go to the training hall, but... I went back to my room, and stayed there. 
Why didn't you go to the training hall like you were asked to? I, I was frightened. Frightened? So I just stayed in my room and meditated until the murder happened. There's more to her story. I just know there is. Maybe I should dig a little deeper. You were asked to go to the training hall on the night of the murder. S However, you didn't go. Because you say you were frightened. What exactly were you so frightened of? What in the world? Uh, is there something wrong? I'm sorry, it's nothing. It looks like she's not aware of them herself. This must be what Wright was talking about. The psycholocks. <laughs> I believe he said that I need to present this Magatama item to do something. So, do you have any idea as to what really occurred last night? I think it was the result of the tremendous spiritual power that was unleashed. Psychologs, yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. I was like, hmm, okay. Because I've, al I've always like considered them psychologs. But like, after this part, I'm like, oh. Of course, if you had to like mishear it as psychologs, it had to be psychologs, right? Spiritual power? Yes, spiritual training has been a cause behind many great tragedies. This incident was just another example. Iris, I'm sorry, but I can't accept that. I'm a man of science. I don't believe in spiritual power. Yes, I understand. Most people don't. And I am certain that the, that the thing that killed the victim was a human. So please answer me this simple question. Were you the one who killed Elise de Nim? I'm not the one who took her life. Hmm. Those psycholog things aren't appearing. I suppose that means I can believe what she, that she's not lying. <laughs> What's wrong? I can't believe what I'm thinking. And here I just finished saying that I don't believe in spiritual power. Hmm. It appears that that's about all you can tell me. Thank you very much for listening to my story. I visited Wright at the hospital before coming here. He asked me to take care of you. Me? Yes, at the trial tomorrow. He asked me to defend you. If Mr. Wright has that much faith in you, Mr. Edgeworth, then I will gladly entrust my fate to your camp to your capable hands. But before that, I have one question. Yes? Do you know Wright? Uh, why would you ask that? Whenever you came up in our conversation, he would begin to act a little strange. Mr. Edgeworth, that, what is Mr. Wright to you? He's a very dear and indispensable friend. They changed this. They changed this very line. They changed it for like the the remake. I believe I saved the the screenshot somewhere. I've been like waiting for it. Yes. Uh, the actual the original line was Mr. Edgeworth. Are you his friend? friend well in a sense yes so they changed it <laughs> they really changed it to make it sound even gayer for some reason i don't know why they would do that but thank you i guess it was five years ago. That's when I... That's when I... Deceived him. You deceived him? I heard that he was... In a lot of pain afterwards because of what happened. I know what a weak person I am. That's why... That's why I thought it was best if he never saw me again. I wanted him to just forget about me... Without learning the truth. Well, if you ask me, Wright is still suffering. And until he learns the truth, I don't think he will ever be able to truly recover. <laughs> Indispensable friend. Yeah. He really said that, huh? Iris, it's not too late. We should go to him. Tell him the truth. I'll defend you, but only if you agree to that one condition. Alright, Miss Redgeworth. I promise. Very well. I'll do everything in my power to get you an acquittal.
That's enough information gathering for now. I should head to the crime scene. Indeed. It sure is cold, all right. So this is it. Dusky Bridge. Oh, it's you, Mr. Edgeworth. Figured it was you. Mm -hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. It's been about a year, or has it been longer? It doesn't matter, Detective. What does matter is why you're shuffling around up here. Oh, ouch. And there's that sharp left jab. Oh yeah, I forgot that she's... <laughs> she's incarcerated. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, I'm happy to see you anyway, Miss Redgeworth. Let me guess. You were transferred to HR by the... By HR to the local precinct. A wise decision. The vast amount of nothing up here should be quite easy to guard. I heard you were back in the country and arranged to come all the way out here. Everybody was real nice. They even let me take charge of the investigation, sir. Gum shoe indeed. Like gum on your shoe. It's impossible to get rid of. I'm supposed to report on the details of the crime scene, sir. Anyway, here I am, Detective Dick Gumshoe, reporting for duty. Great. Um, thank you, Detective. I thought Prosecutor Godot was gonna take it from- get here before me. That guy's a real mystery, I tell you. Prosecutor Godot? I just got back into the country, so I don't really know much about the case. It's simple. Well, simple is as simple does, as they say. You've got no idea how much I've missed that biting sarcasm of yours, sir. But seriously, this one's a piece of cake. There's a witness that saw the whole thing. A witness? We have that bikini lady. Bikini lady? Here? On this freezing cold mountain? Well, you should talk to her yourself if you want the details, sir. I may have to talk to this bikini lady. I mean, decisive witness. <laughs> This is the bridge that Wright fell through. Yup, I can't imagine being that reckless myself. Look before you cross, is how it goes, right? Or was that leap? And, is there something on the other side? There's some old building they call the Inner Temple. But we can't get over there without a bridge, sir. What? Nobody lives there, so it's usually not a problem. But someone was at the Inner Temple doing some training and now they're stuck there. And yes, I heard that from Wright. It's Maya Faye. Know her again? Anyway, the air is really tur turbulent right now, so we can't do an aerial extraction. No one's gonna be able to reach the inner temple until tomorrow, sir. Will she be alright in this cold? So how did this bridge burn down anyway? We're almost 100% sure it was lightning. Lightning? You're telling me the bridge caught on fire due to a fluke bolt of lightning? Yep, last night it snowed for the first time in three days. It's a little unusual for lightning to occur during a snowfall like that. But according to the weather data, lightning definitely struck. Hmm, I see. And this is a very detailed weather report. Almost too detailed. It even has the exact time that the lightning struck the bridge. Well that, we got that information from the witness's testimony. Someone actually saw the lightning hit the bridge. Who is this witness? Sorry, I'll go ask one of the local cops later, sir. So who is this Prosecutor Godot? I've never heard of him. Yeah, he's a new guy. Showed up after you left the country. He's a complete rookie, but nobody can say a bad word about the guy. What kind of man is he? He just became a prosecutor recently, but he's good, sir. Real good. If he's so good, how is it that I've never heard of him? Is he the lead prosecutor on this case? You bet he is. After all, you know who is right in the middle of it. You know who? Phoenix Wright, of course. For some reason, Godot has really got it in for Mr. Wright. Oh? Yeah, he seems to have some kind of grudge. And what would be the cause of this grudge? I don't know. Maybe he made fun of his mask or something. None of this is making any sense. I'd better look into this Godot myself. Let me just show you the badge. Huh? What's that thing doing on your lapel, Mr. Edgeworth? <gasps> he put it on his lapel! <laughs> Is it really that odd? You bet it is, sir. A prosecutor wearing a defense attorney's badge. That's like a detective with a license to kill. Does this little thing hold that ominous of a meaning? 
uh, I would just like to point out that he has a prosecutor badge. He keeps that in his pocket. Anyway. So let's go to main gate, I guess. Yo, Edgy, what took you so long? I'm so cold, my brain started- My brain's turned to sher- Sherbet. Sher- Sherbert. I knew it was a mistake to race back to this country. What do you mean? Right is going to be fine, and the case itself isn't anything unusual. And I find myself taking a request to defend a woman accused of murder. Hey, wait a sec. Hold it. Objection! What's going on here, Miss Regworth? Um, it's hard to explain, but one thing led to another, and... What kind of lame excuse is that? You call yourself a defense attorney? Prosecutor Regworth is a prosecutor, and that's why he's a... He's Prosecutor Regworth. Prosecutor Regworth, defense attorney. Just sounds plain old weird, pal. Right? Prosecutor Edgeworth? I'm not sure what role I'm supposed to be playing anymore. Hmm. Dude. Edgy. I don't see you for a couple of years and your heart turns to Sherbert. Sher -sher -sher Sherbert? I'd say more like Sorbet. It is rather cold here. Iris didn't murder her. Someone else did it. I just know it. Okay? So trust me on this one. Never the romantic, aren't you, Larry? Nevertheless, I'll do whatever I can to prove her innocence. At least until I pass the baton on to Wright, that is. I have to talk to him, yeah. And I'm telling you, Iris is so cute! Right, Edgy? You think so too, don't you? What's wrong? Why are you so quiet? To put it simply, your comment has me highly concerned. Could it be that the reason you think she's innocent? Come on, a girl that cute can't possibly be a murderer. I was right after all. I should have never come back. No, no, don't worry. I see things for how they really are this time. Honest. I've had a penny for every time he said that. It's just that, well, Iris is a delicate flower. You can't force things too much. You know what I mean? Huh? I have no idea what you're talking about, Larry. Oh, uh, uh, forget it. I didn't say anything. Larry, where were you, and what were you doing on the night of the crime? Larry? What? Don't tell me. You think I might have done it? What? Get lost! Go back on your charter jet and get out of my sight, you creep! And I hope your plane crashes and you die! I'll ask just one more time. On the night of the murder, where were you, and what were you doing? Ah, oh, wonderful. As I suspected, Psycholox. Sorry, man. You know me, I just don't remember. My short term memory is a wreck, dude. Okay, cool, whatever. Let's move to the main hall. <sighs> hey, hello there. Um, so how are you feeling? Alright, I suppose. Huh? Who is this? I. My name is Miles Edgeworth. My, 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 a handsome boy such as yourself is always welcome. Oh, if circumstances weren't so tragic, I might just... Rice pudding? Please don't call me boy. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I'm looking for a woman in a bikini. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can tell that she's covering it. Well, you have found her. Now, what can I do for you? I'm sorry, but I don't see any bikinis. <laughs> if you ask nightly, nicely, I might give you a peek, big boy. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth? This is the head nun, Sister Bikini. She's a witness. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? This is exactly why your salary keeps on getting cut. Mm -hmm. My stomach is already growling in protest. So, um... 
What's the latest about my beloved Iris? First, I want to hear what you know. First, I'd like to ask you about last night. Well, last night, we had an acolyte here for training. After dinner, the two of us went to the training hall in the inner temple. She must be talking about Maya. Approximately what time was that? I suppose it was about nine when we left here? Training lasts all night long. It's extremely exhausting. The channeling dojo's head nun must be in attendance at all times to keep watch. Oh, you're right. That does sound exhausting. Detective, this is no time for flattery. Sorry. Sometime around 11, you witnessed the incident in the courtyard. But your duty wasn't the inner temple. Why did you come back here? Hmm, by the way you're staring at me, I'm starting to get goosebumps. <laughs> I'm starting to get goosebumps myself, but for a decidedly different reason. Oh, you get the chills pretty easy, don't you, Miss Redgeworth? Alright then, I'd like you to tell me exactly what you saw in the courtyard. It must have been past 11. Oh, no, I can't say it. it. It's too much for my poor heart. Hey, calm down, lady. Let go of my tie. I saw two people, but one of them was lying on the ground. The other one was stabbing her from the back. With a sword. Did you see this criminal? With your own eyes. I didn't want to believe what I was seeing. But it, it was Iris. She's such a milk. You must have been quite shocked. Of course she was. Try putting yourself in her shoes. It'd be like if you were stabbing Mr. Wright smack in the middle of a courtroom. And I happened to witness it from, from the witness stand. I'd be pretty shocked too. I know it sounds insane, but that's what I saw. And when I finally realized what I was seeing, I screamed. And then I passed out. Unfortunately for us, her testimony seems to be pretty solid. However, the idea of Iris doing such a foul act seems... Unnatural. Unnatural? The girl I know simply isn't capable of this sort of foulness. I wonder what she means by that. As the head nun, it's your duty to stay with the acolyte at all times, correct? Yes, that is correct. I know I may look strong, but the truth is, I've got a bad lower back. Bad lower back? Yes, it's especially bad in the winter. So bad that I can't even lift a bucket. Do you remember how cold it was last night? My bad back felt as stiff as frozen glass. I just wanted to take a nice hot bath to ease my aching back. And that's why I returned to the main hall. So you left the disciple all alone. Don't be ridiculous. I would never do that. And that's why I ordered Iris to the inner temple after she had rung the bell for lights out. Yes, but she never went to the inner temple, did she? So did this head nun actually see Iris there? I think I'd better try to get some more details. So, who is this acolyte that was trained at the inner temple? Her name is Maya Fey. I treated her very badly, I'm ashamed to say. And after she went through the trouble of signing up for the special course. Special course? It's a training session where you sit on a block of spirit ice and chant 30,000 times. You don't mean to tell me she's still doing that over at the inner temple, do you? No, 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 of course not. You don't have to worry about that one little bit. Last night, we still hadn't started the training session itself. Well, um, that's good to hear. No, dear, dear, there's one thing I m forgot to tell you. Uh-oh, I didn't... I don't think I like the sound of this. But do you know that small girl? I believe she is Mystic Maya's little sister. Maya has a little sister? Oh, you mean little Pearl. That's Maya Fey's cousin. Little... Pearl? Well, I thought she was going to visit Mystic Elise after we'd finished with dinner cleanup. But I haven't seen her at all since late last night. She's nowhere to be found. Y you mean she... she was with the victim? It's all the fault of my stupid, creaky old back. A little girl who was with the victim on the, on the night of the murder... is gone. As they say, the plot thickens. Then, Iris, you said you went with Maya to the training hall in the inner temple last night. Did you happen to see Iris while you were there? Of course I saw her. 
I told her to meet us after ringing the ten bell for lights out. So you're saying Iris came to the inner temple then? No, of course she did. Iris has always been a good, obedient girl. After that, I had Iris help Miss Maya begin her training. Uh, ha 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 ha. Oh, that, that, that's funny. <laughs> but that doesn't fit with Iris' story at all. She said that she never went to the inner temple. As they say, the plot thickens. Oh, this is what you meant. The rice pudding. Oh, it's a warm cat box, but where are all the cats? It's called a hibachi. It's for heating the room. Well, look at these ancient strophes, frisbees. Those are a type of sabuton. Cushions called enza. Why are you giving me such a hard time, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Why? Because learning something new might actually be a good thing for you, detective. Interesting. I didn't know that. There are more enza cushions in the corner of the room. What's that white piece of paper sticking out from under that stack? Hmm, beats me. Would you mind checking that for me, Detective Gumshoe? Yes, sir. Here you are, Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like an old manila envelope. Yeah. What is it, Detective? Th th this. This could be it! An ultra-important clue! A super special clue! I suppose I should read it myself, then. Looks like a letter addressed to Sister Iris. Tonight at ten at Heavenly Hall, unless you want your secret to be exposed. This sounds like a blackmail letter. Let's go in there, Mr. Edgeworth. Why can't I ever find clues like that? You're an ultra-important prosecutor, a super-duper prosecutor. Well, I suppose it takes a super-duper kind of dumb to miss a clue like this. Wow, you're so nice. <laughs> And this is where the murder took place, sir. Other than removing the body, we left everything else untouched. Thanks, detective. I'll just have a look around. It looks like the police are still investigating. Oh yeah, by the way, I thought it, I thought I better ask just to be sure. Are you really gonna defend that nun, Iris, at the trial tomorrow? Yes, I will. I gave her my word, and now I must follow through with my commitment. Well, in that case, I've gotta be careful. I've gotta make sure I don't leak the prosecution's whole investigation. Don't worry about it, detective. Just keep your mouth closed and think most of it will flow- And I think most of it will flow out on its own. You got it, sir. I'll make sure it flows out like water from a tap. I see! So that's where the fuck you got me leakier than the discount diaper. That's- That's okay. That's where that comes from. I get it now. Yes, you do that, detective. Just how much has your runny spout leaked over the years? Need to talk to Gumshoe first. The victim is the famous picture book author, Miss Elise Dunim. Her entire past, up until she won the writing award last year, is a total mystery. It's hard to believe in this day and age you can still find people like that. The estimated time of death of the victim was between 10 and 11 p.m. on February 7th. The cause of death was blood loss resulting from a stab to the back by the murder weapon. The murder weapon? The victim was found skewered with a giant sword, sir. That's terrible. Yeah, but there's one strange thing. Yes? The victim's entire body was covered with bruises. The bruises are consistent with falling from the height of a two-story building. A two-story building? That would be about the same height as the room in front of us, correct? Hey, you're right! Way to go, Miss Redgeworth. That just happens to be the room that Elise Dunim was staying in. Maybe she was pushed out of the window after she was stabbed by the sword. Now then, detective. Let's see if we can summarize what we've learned so far. Okay, let's take a look at the map. According to the testimony of Sister Bikini, the head nun, right after they'd finished dinner, she and Maya Fey headed to the inner temple. This is giving me, like, really investigations 
vibes, and I'm here for it. Except for the fact that it has, it still has like the uh, regular Ace Attorney um, controls. Eh. My eye. Right after they finished dinner, she and Maya Fey headed to the inner temple. At 10 p.m. after ringing the bells for light out, Iris went to the inner temple. When she got there, Bikini had her take over while she went back to Hasakura Temple. After taking a hot bath to soothe her back, Sister Bikini witnessed the murder in the courtyard. If you want more details, you should ask Bikini herself in the main hall. The inner temple, huh? I'd like some more information about that place. The trial begins tomorrow, but who's the prosecutor? No, that's everybody. The trial begins tomorrow, but who's the prosecutor? I'm pretty sure it's that Godot guy, but... Nobody can get a hold of him, so they're looking for a replacement. What do you mean? It's really weird. All of a sudden, no one can reach him. Hmm, I wonder if the rumors are true. Maybe since Mr. Wright caught a cold and won't be defending, he just lost interest. I intend to appear in court in the role of defense attorney. However, I would be quite unhappy if it came out that I'm actually a prosecutor. Yeah, I can see why, but I'm not the one you have to worry about. I think the real problem is gonna be that judge. Yes, he certainly would remember my face, even after such a long absence. That's why I requested that another judge preside over the trial tomorrow. We've only met each other once, and there's a good chance he won't remember me at all. Yeah, but what about the prosecutor? Everyone in the prosecutor's office must know you. Wouldn't it be a problem if someone there made a big stink, sir? And there's no need to worry. I pulled a few strings and arranged for a prosecutor of my own choosing. Wow, Mr. Edgeworth. I had no idea you had such a powerful string to pull. What... What is this inner temple that Maya was supposedly training at? According to Bikini, it's an old building they use for training the Acolytes. It's on the other side of Dusky Bridge. The bridge that burned down, huh? Is there anything else on the other side of that bridge besides the inner temple? Nope, not a thing. Nothing? The other side is surrounded by cliffs on all sides. In a way, it's kind of like a little island out there. The only thing there, I there is the inner temple. I hear it's not the kind of place a person could survive in. Please be alright, Maya. He cares! Okay, time to examine. Chichisto. So the sword from this gold statue is actually the murder weapon. It sure is. It's called a Chichisto, by the way. Nasty piece of worst work, sir. There's still blood on it. I suppose this is, this is the victim's blood? Yep, it's all over the blade. And speaking of all over the blade, there are fingerprints all over the hilt of the Shichishto too. Fingerprints? Naturally, they match the fi prints we got from the younger nun, the defendant. Fingerprints are on the murder weapon? What's wrong? You're looking really solemn. I mean, is this how it is for rights? Is this what it's like to be a defense attorney? I figure it doesn't feel really good. To be honest, it feels more like it's detrimental to your health. Examine... Staff again. What's this? It looks like a wizard's staff. I belong to the victim, Miss Lise Dunim. There's nothing strange or magical about it. Yeah, listen, this is just between us, okay, sir? Yes. What? This is top secret stuff. Don't tell anyone about this. Alright. The truth is, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a wizard. That's it. That's what you wanted to tell me? That's it. This is the staff that- this staff was made from a very strong kind of wood. What about fingerprints? Were there any on it? Just the victims.
the detention center, okay. Hmm, I don't see Larry anywhere. Maybe we scare the poor kid away. His heart was shut tight with the number of cycle locks. I guess I'll have to look for him now. What a thorn in my side. Here and then back to the detention center. Huh, Mr. Edgeworth! I came back because I need to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. But I have already told you everything that I... Iris, please remember. I am on your side. You can tell me anything. Y yes, thank you. I just finished speaking with the head nun of Hasakura Temple. She testified very clearly as to what happened. She said she saw you stab Miss Elise Dunim with a sword. And no one and one other thing. She said that when Maya Fei began her training at the inner temple, you were there as well. Huh? When I spoke with you last, you claimed that you never went to the inner temple. And yet Sister Bikini says she met with you at the inner temple that very night. But but I I didn't go there! I didn't go to the Inner Temple last night! Hmm, looks like she's unwilling to tell me the whole truth. I'm wondering if I'll find the answers I'm looking for if I break those cycle locks. Take that! Take that. <laughs> Since I haven't handled this case, handed this case, it is my duty to dig up all the answers, understand? Yes, sir. The smallest flame can sometimes bathe the case in a whole new light. In my years in court, I've seen it happen over and over again. That's why I'm committed to searching until I have those answers. Now then, is it really true that you didn't go to the inner temple last night? Y yes, I swear I already told you that. Yes, you said you didn't go because you were frightened. Th that's right. If that's the case, then the obvious question is, what were you so afraid of? Iris, I wonder, is this what frightened you so much that you couldn't even leave your own room? I found this in the main hall. It is addressed to you. Uh, th that's... Well, Iris. Why? Why are you glaring at me like that? You were scared of the blackmailer who wrote this to you. Isn't that correct? Is it the evidence or the power of my glare that broke that lock? Oh well, I don't suppose it matters either way. But, but Mr. Hedgeworth! Yes? I thought that letter was just someone playing a prank on me. A prank? Well, yes. After all, even if I did have a secret, there's no one to tell it to that would cost me any grief. Hmm, I wonder about that. Sister Bikini is like a mother to me. I would never hide anything from her. No, you may not have anything to hide under normal circumstances. However, last night was different. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact nature of your secret yet. However, whatever it is, there is one person you didn't want your secret told to. Phoenix Wright. Wait, what, what, did, what did it say? My friend since grade school fell from Dusky Bridge and is currently hospitalized. Okay, cool. Homicide detective at the local precinct in charge of the Im initial investigation. Okay, my friend since grade school. I don't remember how we became friends, though. <laughs> mm. Prosecutor for this case. He apparently holds some sort of grudge against rights. Interesting. Imagine sitting in the detention center and the lawyer suddenly is like that and starts a family against his friend. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm like so excited for uh, for investigations and I'm so excited for Apollo Justice. What? Uh, I'm like such a such a nerd. Like I'm sitting here just like completely still, but inside I'm like, I wish I was joking, <laughs> but I am so excited. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. You mean something to write, it seems. And I can tell he holds a special special place in your heart as well. 
That's why you didn't want him, of all people, to know your deep, dark secret. Well, what do you have to say? I should have expected as much. Especially from a friend of his. Yeah. Friend. Sure, let's just go with that. After dinner, this letter was waiting for me in my room. As I said, I was frightened by it. What is this heavenly hall the letter mentions? It's a small mountain shack at the base of Dusky Bridge. A small shack, huh? It's more like a broken down shack that no one would ever want to go near. Hmm. Where is it on this map? It's around here. Together, you must follow a small path down from Dusky Bridge. The reality is, to get to the inner temple, I had no choice but to cross that bridge. But the thought that such a terrible criminal could be waiting, could be lurking at Heavenly Hall. I, I was so scared by the whole affair that I didn't even want to think about it. So this is the secret that you locked away in your heart. Yes. It looks as though I may have to visit this Heavenly Hall now. Maybe I'll find some sign of our mystery blackmailer. In any case, you still claim to have never left your room that last night. Yes, that's exactly right. The trial starts tomorrow. I promise you, I will win. I'm going to win so that you and Phoenix Wright can see each other again. But when I do, you must promise me that you will tell him your secret. But it's pointless. Why would you say that? Because I may know who Phoenix Wright is, but he has no idea who I am. Okay, yeah, I moved to Heavenly Hall. Oh my god. And there's not much left of this chapter. And I believe there is a... Oh, this is this is the second part of the investigation. Okay. And like, should I do the first trial too? Now, what the hell kind of fucking flag is this? Not the Korean one, but the 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 wannabe uh, Irish flag, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, I figured I can I can do the the first trial because then I only have uh, how much left? <laughs> the freak wreck is that? I think it's supposed to be the Irish flag. But the colors are wrong. I, I at least like the the yellow is supposed to be orange. Though to be fair, there is like no other flag with orange in it, so Huh, interesting. Yeah, because if I do, if I do like the entire, tr like the, the first trial, which is like two parts, um, then I just have like five parts left and I can do that tomorrow. It's perfect. Yes. Okay. I'm doing it like that. I'm doing it like that. I'm, um, since we're almost finished this and then it takes like maybe two hours for the, for the trial, but have they seen the Irish flag before? I believe it's because of the colors. Like, they wanted to, like, make it, like, look nice together. I don't know. It doesn't really make much sense, but whatever. Whoa, not much of a view down here, huh? It's still better than the view from my apartment, though. Someone's here. Hide yourself, detective. Oh, why, why, why? Why does this always happen? Whenever I find a girl I like, they always run away. I even chased one of them to Japan. Next it's going to be prison, I guess. I'll steal that detective's wallet. That'll get me locked up for sure. Nah. Can't do that to someone who still looks like he's down, to, down on his luck. 
He's just talking to himself. Shh. Be quiet and listen. I knew it. I shouldn't have done that. I blew it again. Why is he monologuing to himself? <laughs> done that? What did he do? I wonder. Hey, you! About what you just said. I got an objection. What the? Edgy, you dirty rats! Gumshoe, you oaf. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Before I knew it, I was shouting out objection. And in a loud, commanding voice, too. I even pointed with my pointer finger. You've watched too many trials. I'm sorry. Okay, Larry, the jig is up. What have you got to say for yourself? Uh. There we go. What is this little shack, anyway? Well, I just discovered it myself yesterday. Why were you down here in the first place? Uh, come on, I'm an artist. I was looking for a good place to sketch. This is a great little place. It's, uh, artistic. It's quiet, it's cold, it's got no power, and it looks like it's about to collapse. Sounds a lot like my apartment there, pal. One thing's for sure. No one's likely to show up and disturb you here. Can I get you something to drink? Some hot water, maybe? He's getting all buddy-buddy on us, sir. Listen to me, Edgy. You gotta do this. You gotta save Iris. Why are you so sure she's innocent? Because she's cute? Watch your mouth! Anyway, I've, I've made up my mind about it. I'm going to marry that girl. Um... Mr. Edgeworth is pretending he didn't hear you. So I'm gonna ask for him. Have you already asked this girl to marry you? No, no, not yet. But I can tell how she feels by the look in her eyes. She's got this, I really want this man to carry me over the thresh threshold look. I'm sure Nick would be surprised. He'd never imagined that I could marry such a beautiful girl like that. Something tells me he would be shocked indeed. That's why I didn't want her to do anything dangerous. I mean, what am I gonna do if she gets hurt? What is this guy trying to say? He lost me about a mile back. Hmm, if we really want to know the answer to that, we're going to have to drag on him onto the witness stand. Come to think of it, you still haven't answered my question. Where were you, and what were you doing last night? Oh man, don't you have anything else to talk about? With that kind of attitude, you'll never be a ladies' man like me. Okay, okay, chill out with those scary eyes. I got it. Whoever said that he wanted to be a ladies' man? Hold on, wait, where is- do I- Yes, there is a supposed interview with the writer of Ace Attorney that Edgeworth isn't interested in women, but thinks Phoenix looks rather nice. Also, it has been confirmed that Phoenix thinks, Ed thinks Edgeworth looks attractive, so... Everyone is everyone by. No, but they literally said that Edgeworth is not interested in women. So much representation. Also, they were like featured in like an official Nintendo magazine of like the the best couples or something. They were like somewhere in the middle. It was like 35 best couples. And they were like somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> if you really want to know, last night I saw something incredible. Something incredible. It's... 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 No, it's 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 practically at least like semi canon at this point. Yeah, yeah, but let's not talk about that now. Let's talk about the good old days. What do you say? Come on, I'll pour you so a nice cup of hot water. Why well, hasn't he realized that I absolutely despise talking about the good old days, especially with him? I mean, 
to be fair. He thought he killed his own father for God knows how many years. I got so excited that I poured way too much chili in my curry. <laughs> you will suffer for Darumitsu. <laughs> you will suffer. <laughs> Okay, I have to present the the magatama. All right, now you are going to tell me what you really saw that last night. Whoa, you're really upset, aren't you, Edgy? Okay, I'll talk. Huh? That was a bit too easy. Yeah. Anyway, it was awesome. Never seen anything like it. At around ten o'clock last night, it started thundering. I've been sleeping. I'm not sure for how long. Suddenly, zing! The world in front of me went white. Like I'd just been slapped in the face by my old girlfriend, Naomi. And then... And then, it was on fire! The bridge was on fire! Edgy <laughs> probably has a lot of childhood trauma, doesn't want to return to- mm, Yeah, pretty much. This poor dude. I'm s I feel so bad for him. The ski bridge caught on fire. Are you saying you saw it with your own eyes? Hey! Why are you giving me the evil eye? I'm telling the truth. Hmm, and there are still three psycho locks remaining. remaining. That means he's still trying to hide something. And by the way, Larry, where were you when you saw that happen? Where, you say? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Just answer the question. I was in my own room, by the main hall. Where else would I be? As usual, you're as transparent as an empty jelly jar. The problem, I suspect, lies there. There? W what do you mean, that there? It's impossible for you to have seen lightning strike Dusky Bridge from your room. Uh, how's I got a temple map there? This is a map of the area. Take a look around the vicinity of Hasakura Temple. W what am I looking for? I think that should be fairly obvious. The main hall is surrounded by trees, and it's impossible to see the bridge from here. What? Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, how about it? How about what? You feel like talking now. And about what? It looks like it won't be that easy after all. You leave me no choice. I'll have to move on to the next step. You weren't in your room at the temple, so then, where were you? You don't know that I wasn't in my room. So where was Larry, and why was he there? If I read the situation up to this point correctly, the answer the answer is fairly obvious. Very well then, let's test my theory. The place you witnessed lightning striking Dusky Bridge from was here. The place you saw the lightning strike from was naturally Heavenly Hall. I better be hanging out in this old shack. It's freezing cold, there's no ele electricity, and I could fall apart, and it could fall apart at any minute. Larry, how do you know that anyway? How do you know there's no electricity? After all, it's not that dark yet. Uh-oh. In other words, you have just provided evidence to prove my theory. My theory that- that- my th My theory that you've at least once in your life visited Heavenly Hall after sunsets. I have to admit I'm impressed, Edgy. We're in a totally le different league from Nick. That's nice. Now tell me. What were you doing at this cold little shack last night? That's what you might call a fair decor. I think you mean a fair decor. <laughs> a fair decor. Could it be you were waiting for someone? Oh no! You really are one scary guy, you know. I believe that last night you were waiting for this person to come meet you. I know this part. And there's only one person who you'd wait for in a horrible place like this, Larry. I told you before, don't call me Larry. The person you were waiting for, the person you were <laughs> the person you were waiting for was Iris. Oh, suddenly I feel cold all over, Edgy. No doubt because of my chilly glare. So you think I got the house for Sister Iris, huh? Do you have some kind of evidence? It's something that proves I was waiting for her? Or are you just guessing? 
And this is where I draw the line and end this ridiculous little game. Here is the evidence that proves you were waiting for Iris. The newt. Here's your evidence. You called her to this spot with a pathetic blackmail letter. Give that back! You're embarrassing me! What are you doing with that anyway? That's not important. I misjudged you, Larry. What do you mean? Taking advantage of a woman's frailty like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh! Oh! First of all, what's this at the top of the letter? It says, Salutation here. Well, that's what it said in that book, Letter Writing for Dummies. You're not supposed to actually write that. And that's where you're supposed to write, Dear Iris. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wait, can I actually read the letter? Like, in its entirety? Your salutation here! There is something I must talk to you about. I'll be waiting for you tonight at 10 at Heavenly Hall. Make sure you come unless you want your secret to be exposed. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> so you were here in Heavenly Hall last night, weren't you, Larry? And you saw the lightning hit Dusky Bridge, didn't you? Sorry, Edgy. Sorry doesn't cut it, you scumbag. Threatening a young lady like that. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold up. No, pal. What are you talking about? That threatening stuff? I'll tell you what, you tried to scare Iris by threatening to expose her secret, pal. What do you mean by- What do you mean threaten? Why did I threaten her? Unless you want your secret to be exposed. It sure sounds like a threat to me, pal. Blackmail, in fact. Give me a break, it's a love letter. Haven't you ever been in love? What did you just say? My love for her burns so hotly it could melt all the snow on this mountain. Oh. Then what is this secret you mentioned? Come on, Edgy. Don't you get it? I'm talking about the secret love between her and me. Obviously she wouldn't want old Lady Bikini to know about it, right? About our hot and sour bittersweet love affair? Love affair? Alright, then why did you send a love letter in a business-like manila envelope? Give me a break, it's not my fault I didn't have any other envelopes. Yeesh. Why were you so quick to apologize, pal? Because Edgy gave me a, that scary look of his. What's wrong, Edgy? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? And that's it? That's what all those huge dogs were about? I don't understand why you were so defensive. Well, I don't know either. I guess the thing is, you shouldn't expect too much from a guy like me. Hey, come on, don't let it get you down. I asked the most romantic thing in the world, blackmail and Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> oh yeah, for real. That's peak romance right there. B but Mr. Edgeworth, this guy is still hiding something. I know it. What do you mean, detective? Don't forget what this guy said just a minute ago. If you really want to know, last night I saw something incredible. Okay, cool. Hmm, he's right. Larry! What? You're looking at me like a hungry dog that just found a ball, bone! What was this something incredible you saw last night? You're going to tell me, Larry, one way or another. I, I already told you, didn't I? I saw lightning strike Dusky Bridge. Yes, and I believe it was the incredible sight you saw. But now that I think about it, something doesn't quite ring true. But what doesn't? If that's all there is to your story, your heart wouldn't have had all those locks. Therefore, Larry, I do believe you saw something last night. Something more incredible than lightning. What? When? Where? Why? How? Hey, what do you think you're doing? If you hide anything from Miss Regworth, I'll arrest you on the spot, pal. Oh. Oh. No! What's wrong, sir? Does this mean I have to do it all over again? Why are you glaring at me like I'm next to be hit by a bolt of lightning? Just about had it with this Harlequin. If I really want to drag the truth out of him, I'll just have to drag him to the witness stand.
Oh, yes. That nice neck crack. Love that. Trial time! Woo! Oh my! Mr. Loris feels that way about me? Defense attorney Edgeworth is on the case. Well, he sure is, pal. Apparently, he isn't even aware of your... He isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. And in any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. And does that mean Mr. Loris is the witness today? No. And I believe that none will be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I'm not even four hours in. I feel like I'm speedrunning this bitch. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Dunim, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Considering I spent like almost two hours on like the entire first case. And now I spent like one hour and I've made it through like two investigation parts. But I'm I'm only gonna do I'm only gonna do half the case today. <laughs> Regardless. It wasn't me. Very well then. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes. You're a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I've made the necessary arrangements. I, I see. Iris. It is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I am a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people. And to believe until the bitter end. And that's what my friend told me once. Mr. Hedgeworth! I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself. Whether or not I am fit to do the task I have been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hasakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Look, he has God help. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's wearing the badge. Oh my god. <laughs> the defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before it has ha it had a chance to begin. I am ready to announce my verdict at this time. And this court finds the defendant. Yes! The prosecution stands ready. A and and you are Francisca von Karma, pros prosecuting prodigy. F von Karma, you say? Perchance you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I am a von Karma. That is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. Sibling battle. <laughs> You did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? And by the way, Miss Redgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. I am almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man pro among us. Among <laughs> There is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. There, there isn't, but I'm sure 
moments before in this courtroom. Ah! I told you, there is no such weakling. What is that? A whip! I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. Bailiff, remove that whip at... I have no objection to the whip. You don't? The prosecution can wield the whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you, to crush you slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the hist histrionic. Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Ah. The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well. Miss von Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture, picture book author, Miss Elise de Nim. Her body was found in the Hasakura Temple courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. In the sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo in, of the crime scene. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there was a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. <laughs> Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on here. I'm not sure about... I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> if I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain... ...plagued witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady. Me in the kitchen? <laughs> Fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me? Well, I'm the head nun of Hasakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini. Nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. The courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with lechery in the hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. Y you want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in the twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. <laughs> in any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? <laughs> I think he's supposed to be Canadian. Though, like, I'm not, like, totally sure. But, like, I get the feeling, like, that he's, like, supposed to be, like, Canadian or something. Like, is he, you know, Canadian? <laughs> Fucking a boot. That night day. I don't know how to speak Canadian. I say as I've said certain things in an in a Canadian accent already. Anyways, that night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple. But well, as you can see, my back lights act up violently, so I left Iris to help the acolyte and return to Hazaku Hazakura Temple. There is no bath at the inner temple, you see, and I needed a long hot soak. It was after I had finished, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hasakura Temple. Yes, you could say that. Hockey, hockey, maple syrup and all that. <laughs> if 
my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the inner temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle, now are you, Miles Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. It's this and uh, Iris testimony. <laughs> Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on the power their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry, I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith. After all, the head honcho of Hasakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honsho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. N no! She said that. A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder, murder was committed in the courtyard of Hasakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. Ah. All people lie. That, that is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means, we must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, well, that isn't exactly what I do know how old she is. 48. Then how old is he? <laughs> My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in winter. Then, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination. Eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. And please add your comments about about Iris to the testimony. And let us return to the cross-examination. Yeah, I know he's the younger brother, but like... If he is like almost 50, then how old is the judge? Like the, 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 the other one, the main one, I guess you could say. That night I was helping an acolyte with the training. Okay, that's not it. Uh, it's the... Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. Witness, let's get one thing straight. I'm not. The defendant whom you claim to have met. She was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? And of course. That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold it right there. Why do you have that? That's, that's the question of the day now, isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out bell was rung. Oh, what? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw, she saw, should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. Look, he's handing on like 50 of those boxes. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Sister. I didn't even read what the judge said, but it wasn't really that important. It was just order, order. I, that's all I saw, really. This hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. I see. A stockpile. A surplus of hoods. Hey. Each nun is only given one hood. This should be the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm. 
And this is quite strange. Eh? If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have won one of those. There is no contradiction here. Hmm. Sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness. While I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath and on, way, on your way back to the inner temple. No seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. When I finished my bath around 11 and I thought I should return to, to the inner temple. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and Iris was... Oh, Mr. Kelis! Uh, with that sword of all things. Mr. Kelis was staying in the corner room, which faces out onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pu pushed out of her window. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in two in court. And me seeing it all from this very chair. Eh, well, something like that. This judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? That sounds kinky. <laughs> what sounds kinky? Like, specifically what? I oh, know it's not it. doesn't feel like she's lying. She claims to have seen the incident with the defendant that attacked the victim. Only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. As a who? As a who, who the what's it? <laughs> about the stabbing. Stabbing, there it is. And the autopsy report. Do, do, do. Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say anyway. I'll be giving the seed stimulation for them. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing, Miss Von Karma. Would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The, the autopsy report. The victim did fall from a height of ten feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. That's right, it says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and, stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take, the ten, take a ten-foot fall? Huh? Well, order, order. The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? Th that is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. And she and she was then thrown out of her window down to the down into the courtyard below. Were there any signs of a struggle in Mr. Nim's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? Ah. No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. However, if there was no blood in the room, then you're... Uh, I'm sure there is no need for me to go over this. As I'm sure your honor... Your honor is well, well aware of when a stab wound proceeds, produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood, very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the bl most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed. With the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion, then. 
the victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Order! 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 I must admit that this is a probable version of events. I expect no less from Francisca von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Huh. It seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition from your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please, remain standing on the crate. <laughs> Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me out of shape. Especially my back and my mood. Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip? Oh boy. All right, all right. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab, Mystic Elise. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Ami... ...was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility. Francisca von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Press this. So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? That's right! Some of it had splattered onto Iris too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room. And her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood flecked as well? Hmm, that seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further. Press further. Going back to your previous statement. You said that you saw little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now you say you saw the victim bleeding. Well, well, I say that what I saw is what I saw. What did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed, but I saw the girl pull the sword out of her. Plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. I saw the instant in which the blade plunged into the hilt was smoothly drawn out, but... Objection! To the hilt? Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. Well, what do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen. The weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impos impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain your- ah! Explain yourself. To start with, do you, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear? What meaningless dribble. I too may appear to be weak and frail. But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, so I sh should I so choose. So she is a dominatrix. Love that for her. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> the objection stands. I left a little back there, I must admit. Objection! That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. Uh, that's... We also have, a pro have the problem of the amount of bleeding. <laughs> they are really, really inclusive with the representation. 
It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. What I don't understand is that, um... We have MILFs, lesbians, gays, bi's, doms, aces. Aces? When do we have aces? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not to mention uh, drag queens. Jean Armstrong. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would consider Edgeworth asexual. Maybe, I don't know. Never really thought about it, I guess. But also, wouldn't like shaping the sword like that be like really um, inconvenient in the first place? Because it would be really hard. I mean, I know it's not actually meant to use as a weapon, but it would be really hard to stab with it because you wouldn't be able to like stab a lot. But like if you had the branches go the other way, like bending towards the hilt, then it would go eas more easily into the other person, but it will be way harder to get out. <laughs> you know, kind of like when you get like a fish hook stuck in your finger and you're not supposed to like pull it back. You're supposed to like push it through and cut off the tip and then drag it out again. No! <laughs> Listen, when I was when I was young, one of my favorite things to do was to read through like medicinal lexicons. We had like five or six of them, I believe, at home. And I just loved reading through those. And we also had like this little um not magazine, what's the word I'm looking for? And it was just like little little book about like what to do in like uh, special like um emergency situations so like it's like uh what to do if you have like burns and a lot there were just like a lot of really nasty pictures but like i loved looking at it <laughs> like a freak <laughs> no but I, I, I like found it interesting Anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> the wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Objection. That's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with a shichisto. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. I mean, technically, that one would slide out smoothly because of the way that the branches go. Always handy to know. I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You've still got more? This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Huh. If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! Order! Order! Ah! Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one if that. But what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but having come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shichisto. What? Foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think this sword was the murder weapon? Well... It's because Mystic Army was holding it. 
happen exactly. It, however, if you reflect on this, that is only that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That that is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that the Shichisto was the murder weapon. Order, 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 ah! So maybe the Shichisto was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Hmm, that's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes, namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? And it goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found. Th that's... Answer the question, Miss Von Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Hmm, another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Oh, one more testimony and then we move on to the second part. Excuse me, could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible that just maybe what actually happened was... It was just over there. What exactly are you going on about here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe... Maybe... I, I think I, I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then. I think we need to hear testimony from you once more, one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could this old woman have seen? And I saw the murder at around 11 p.m. And after asking that it, that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. And there, I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated a snowmobile had been used. It takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusty, Dusky Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. Iris could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile, snowmobile after all. Yeah. And she just wants to go back home and drink some tea. <laughs> oh, for real though. Hmm, witness, please, tell us everything you know right away the next time. Well, I'm not in the best of shape, but with my back and my age, you know. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile mark tracks in front of the main gate. Here is a photograph. Mm, a snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. Oh. Uh, I miss it. I miss riding snowmobiles. It's so much fun. Like, oh, uh, just like the smell and <laughs> and like the feeling of just like driving. Oh, uh, wonderful. I mean, not that I ever could drive alone, considering you actually need to have like um, a license for that. And I wasn't old enough at the time. And I still don't have a license. <laughs> And the tracks begin in front of Hasakura Temple. I believe I've driven both, actually. <laughs> there is this... Uh, there was this... I, I believe, actually, my dad has it on video somewhere. <laughs> where I am sitting in front of him on the snowmobile. And I was in control of, like, everything. He was just, like, kind of, like, holding around me, making sure, like, I wasn't gonna fall off or anything. And, uh... He was like, he got someone to film it or something. I don't know. And I just immediately, like, full speed ahead. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Just like, oh my god, driving on the ice? Like, as long as it's like, you know, thick enough. Oh, it's so much fun. It's just like, so open, just blasting off. 
Yeah, pretty much. The trucks begin in front of Hasakura Temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. And that solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over and over in winter, making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. You should really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon. Mr. Edgeworth, your cross-examination, please. Maybe. There we go. I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the, night of the murder. And you finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miss Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? What do you mean? I reserved Hasakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge and those from coming back. Ah, you're right. Hm. You're forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. Mm, no, this... No, it doesn't. Not if it takes, like, less than five minutes to go down to the river and then another five minutes to drive up. There would still be some marks. Footprints. There are footprints, too. I didn't even see that. But yeah, there are footprints. You're right. Interesting. Hmm, I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped. Leaving just the return tracks in the snow. And what do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Is there a flaw in her theory? This idea that, that the snowfall covered one set of tracks. tracks to the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Would you care to explain? Why there, why there is a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction? No need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. Yeah, like, there had to be, like, a snowstorm for it to actually, like, cover it. I mean... There was lightning. Let me look at the weather. Weather date, actually. Snow with occasional lightning strikes. It just says snow. It doesn't say heavy snow. It doesn't say snowstorm. It doesn't say anything like that. Just snow. No way. There is no way. You would see, you would see like an indentation. And especially like if they were so close, there is no way that you would see one and not the other. Meaning that if, if it drove like back and forth, it would have had been a long time between the back or the fourth and back i guess but maybe that's just me thinking too 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 much into this <laughs> because i'm 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 very accustomed with snow i know how it works i know how it works with snowmobiles too on the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, the outgoing tracks were erased by snow. Nor so claims Miss Von Karma. Miss Rashworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered by snow. Oh, here's the weather data. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Also, that's also a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to look at that at the time. 7 to 10.50. And she saw it at 11. So there is no way for it to have covered the tracks. So like I said, what I said still, still, still stays. Mmm. <laughs> Actually, well, yes, but once you, like, actually have some, um, 
not momentum. What am I thinking of? Maybe it's just momentum. I don't know. When, when you have like some speed going, um, it's not very deep. Please tell us again what, what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course, this means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report? Snow started to fall at 7pm, but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11pm, the snow had already stopped falling. But, uh... Yeah, no, this is this is very this is very accurate to what you would see. So you see, it's not very deep, like not really. Despite them being heavy, they actually like don't really create deep tracks at all, like depending on the snow, of course, but yeah. The footprints seem deeper. They do. I guess it's because like the weight of a snowmobile is like more uh, like spread out, you know, it's not like centered up on one place. Meanwhile, the weight uh, on a foot All of your weight is on one foot <laughs> When you take a step, you know Anyway, the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up Humans are poorly designed <laughs> Order! Order! Very well then. It looks like Miss Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. Ah! It's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on the weather of all things. That's also something I never understood. Like, snow day? It's like they are never prepared. <laughs> Americans, why do you get days off when there is a lot of snow? Like, fuck, I've, I've walked, I've walked to school in minus 10 degrees weather. That's fucking cold. It's cold as shit. I be actually, I believe we actually got down to like minus 15 at some point. Maybe even colder, maybe minus 20. And we're not like, when we, when we were at school, we weren't supposed to go outside like for recess. If it was like minus 15, if I recall c correctly, because... It's just way too cold and... Yeah. In the Netherlands, all public transport is shut off when they get above five centimeters with snow. Really? That's interesting. It's, it's, it, it just baffles me how like some places are so like not prepared for snow. Like at all. They like, they have no plans. They have like, the plan is just like shut everything off. Just nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Scandinavia is like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> The first time I was in Sweden was the first time there was a lot of snow. Oh, you're not, you're not from Sweden? Yeah, it, it's, it snows a lot in Scandinavia in general. And even here, like, people are surprised when there's snow. Ah, oh, I see. That's interesting. It's like, when people have to, like, uh, change to winter tires, it just always surprises them that, like, suddenly the road is just really slippery with ice. They're like, huh? Winter tires? <laughs> It's kind of fascinating how, like, slow some people are with, like, changing to winter tires. Anyways. <clears throat> Answer me this, then. When is a weather report ever correct? Well, no, 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 you got it all wrong. 
This isn't the forecast. This is actual data. Eh. Forecast data. All weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may have still been snowing on the in the vicinity well past 11 p.m. Hmm. It's true. We cannot be totally sure, eh? What? How did you pull that off? I mean, it stopped snowing at Hasakura Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I too cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Ha! Huh, you can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? I mean... A crank oil. My little brother's teacher's got mad at him. Teacher got mad at him for missing school days because the hill our house is almost covered in ice. And even with spiky tires, we couldn't get down. He just, just, just came to school. Okay, but like, what if you can't ski? This coming from an, a Norwegian, by the way, who... Who like have like the rumor of being born with skis on their feet? I am very much not one of those people. Ninety kilometers away from our house? <gasps> what the fuck? That's quite a lot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, welcome to Scandinavia. <laughs> we don't give a shit. Oh my god. Yeah, ski. Yeah, ski for like three hours. You just have to get up at like four. Men maybe. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point, that being, whether or not it was snowing in the courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right, but proving that is incredibly easy. If you want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I am referring to the photo of the crime scene. And as you can see, everything is covered with snow, with just one exception, and that is... That is the victim herself, Miss Elise Dunim. Why is there snow? Is why is there snow? Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed. That's why. Mm -hmm. In other words, if the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph there should be two sets of tracks. Order, order. Just what are you? Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I am not entirely sure myself, but this is simply what all of the facts point to. At night, someone used a snowmobile to leave Hasakura Temple. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then when this person returned to Hasakura Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus the return tracks remained. Hmm. Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There is only one key for the snowmobile. Furthermore, on the night in question, we know that, defen that the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean what that night, Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. But Iris said that she never went there. She'll probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. 
The snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge. So she must have left it on the Hasakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. That sounds right. But what's odd is when I left Iris and returned to the Hasakura temple. I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. You must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe. But when I made it back to Hasakura Temple... It was there, by the main gate. In the snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. B but that... is impossible. Order! Order! Order in the court! What does this all mean? <laughs> so then, what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowmobile to return to Hasakura Temple. Hmm. I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. Wasn't it also dark? Shh. <laughs> I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes. I have nothing more to add. I've told you everything. Everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with this same problem. If only there was someone, a witness, who could testify to having seen the snowmobile. A witness, huh? Was there no one out walking, perhaps, near Dusky Bridge that, on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering in that. Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An idiot may may well have gone wandering out on the on that subarctic night. Your Honor, actually, there just might be one individual who may be of help to us. Really? You know someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder. I don't know for sure if he saw it or not, but there are two things about th about him that that do come to mind, which are first that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder, and the second being. This individual that I am thinking of went wandering outside on the cold night. In other words, he is an idiot. <laughs> it's our kind of idiot. I, I got it so close. My god, Edgeworth, we are on the same brave, brave <laughs> wavelength. We need an idiot? I might just know a guy. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot you're talking about? <laughs> this guy must be a product of Jean-Luc de Ledoc's guide to obnoxious French painting. This is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim, Elise Donim. Her student. Interesting. And why was he wandering about outside on the night of the murder? That... that's... I could tell them all about his designs for Iris. But it may cost us his credibility as a witness before I can even... before I even call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was, perhaps, searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate and reliable looking man... What exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him, right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he is in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry. You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20-minute break. Miss Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. 
Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. I got really, like, distracted during this trial. It's fine, though. We're only four and a half hours in. Yeah, this isn't too long. At least it doesn't look too long. <laughs> huh. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. Alright, I'll help you in any way I can. First, about that night. You really didn't go to the inner temple, correct? The last witness... The last witness... <laughs> claims to have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth... It is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hasakura Temple. Very well. The second thing then. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night. Were you the one who used the snowmobile? There was only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out to Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Iris. I can't tell you about that yet. Yet? Not until her safety is confirmed. Her? The safety of the Acolyte. The Acolyte, huh? She must be talking about Maya. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Dunim? No matter who or what may come, you could never take a life. And as I thought, no psycholocks. Very well. It is my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. Court will now reconvene. Miss Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Suspicious behavior? He was sketching something. Very intensely. Dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? He drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious whip. I can only presume that his intention was to capture you- ah! Anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Larise de Nim, I hope you're ready. Get in here! It would seem that whip is going to be going to see plenty more use today. Your sketch is in contempt of this court. Hey, I was just artistically ow! You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you Josefina, correct? Look, I'm nothing but a fledging artist, training out in the mountains. I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint. Well, to use the technical term of the c for the color, Viridian. Larry, this isn't an art store, now is it? I know, I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? I presume he wanted to say field work, I hope. That's it! Thanks, buddy! It's kind of sad that I was able to un understand his Megal train wreck of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. So see? I've got nothing to do with this trial, at all! I expect all of your faces to be red when you realize this mistake. Bright red. Or to use the technical term, Crimson Lake. Ouch! Stop your pathetic blabbing and testify like a man. Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma. Cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Witness, that was all your fault. Testify now. 
Yeah, and he needed that Viridian Green for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but why would he actually need that? Like, technically, you only need, like, three colors. And then you can, like... Well, three colors and also white and black. And then you can just mix yourself to, like, whatever colors you want. And no, contrary to popular belief, it is not red, blue, yellow. It is cyan, my magenta, and yellow. Because if you use red and blue, they always end up like more muddy. But if you use cyan and magenta, beautiful, truly. <laughs> this is too much for me. Which is why the printer cartridges are CMYK, you know, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. I was at the lodge up in the mountains looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a snowmobile. I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night either. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. Aren't I, Edgy? What color do you mean? Cyan? Magenta? <laughs> Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. I'm just a nobody, nothing but a small worthless man, aren't I? And why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation or anything else? Mr. Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's recently been the cause of mur numerous incidents. Oh, yeah. The primary colors. That's what they're called. But yeah, for the best results, you use cyan, magenta, yellow to mix colors instead of red, blue, yellow. I think he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Yeah, that's right! I'm behind everything! Every case! Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you eternally unhappy. Well then, let us proceed with the cross-examination. With no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. Okay. Didn't see anyone that... That night. Oh. Dumbass. <laughs> what is Larry representing my teenage years? Larry Butts. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. But having realized just how much of a nuisance you have been, that could be considered a step in the right direction. Edgy, are you trying to console me? It certainly doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. <laughs> You're totally pinning this on me. Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened across a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts. That's right, me in the flesh. Hmm, listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain pretty pathetic, you will continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. But, what do you want me to do then? Larry, what you need to change is your inner self, but for now. What you saw that night, testifying truthfully about this one issue, is all I need from you. Edgy, I... I think I've finally woken up. Well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. 
<laughs> court group therapy is in session. What did you see on the night of the murder? I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been about 10.30 p.m. I was lying under my bedding when, I, when a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window, and Dusky Bridge was on fire. I know, he looks... <laughs> looks so kind and wholesome. He does. It's very true. He also looks very symmetrical. If it wasn't for, like, the highlights in his hair, it would just look, like, completely symmetrical. Like, even the shadows. <laughs> there was still some thunder, but I went right away to check, out, check it out. It's when I ran into Nick. Hmm. You certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the bridge after we caught on fire? It was like me after a three days stint chasing a girl. It totally burnt out, like, almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains was what caused Nick to fall. W what did you say? Oh, don't worry. It's nothing life-threatening. He just caught a cold! <laughs> My mic did not pick up that sound. <laughs> I mean, it's probably for the best. So it's a shame that you you didn't get to experience that sound because I don't know how I made that. <laughs> like imagine you fall 40 feet down to freezing cold water and you just get a cold. That's Phoenix right for you. <laughs> Tell me this is freezing rapid flowing water. Yeah, exactly. Gets away with cold. It gets worse in the future. Let me just tell <laughs> No biggie. I never know with that man if he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Redworth, please commence your cross-examination. Okay, uh... La la, press on the fourth statement that the, there was still some thunder. This one. You said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? Hmm. Lightning fell and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? Phoenix is one of those people who can sleep in weird positions and not have their own neck killed them the next day. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> I mean, I suddenly thought, gotta go check this out. How far is the small shack you were, f were in from the bridge? Hold on, well, it had pretty much stopped snowing. I guess about a five minute walk? And how did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like, I had recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make doing school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info? Why didn't you call anyone? Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, Edgy? What's with the serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Huh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try and tell someone. There is a public phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Uh huh? Yeah, okay. A reason, my reason. It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? I arrived at the bridge and Nick showed up less than a minute later. Objection! Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. What the hey, Edgy? You make me sound like some sort of alien! But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here... It's time. Never been the best timekeeper, you know. 
Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge. And immediately went to see what had happened. Is this correct? Yeah. Well, I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge. Meaning you probably got, got there at around 11 p.m. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. That's impossible. What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in Hasakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There is no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Oh, excuse me. I, I have an objection. You do? Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry. I'm Loris the name. Ah! It has not been proving that the murder occurred at 11 p.m. The sister only said around 11. In which case, it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Francisca von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. For there is still no way that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11 p.m. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather, weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15 p.m. Which means, what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge while it was being consumed by the flames that night. In fact, he did not arrive on the scene until after the flames had died down. Larry, you arrived at the bridge at 11 p.m., but Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. I suggest you stop hiding things and just tell us the whole truth now. Then, what happened during th these missing 15 minutes? I, I feel like I just got brutally woken up by toilet splashback. I guess I was still sleeping after all. Ha ha ha, pinch me. Order, order, order. So that was a missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix Wright. I hardly see that much of a problem. That as much as... You're not much of a problem at all. Really. The bridge is burning before your eyes and there is a phone right next to it. Why then did you not report the accident? Yes, witness, why didn't you? Were you there simply to watch the bridge burn? And therein lies the problem. For even after the bridge had burnt out, he was still there. Staring into space, this witness didn't even attempt to fulfill his civic du duty. That's what it sounds like. Ah, but this is Larry we are talking about, and even he is incapable of being so stupid. Which means there has to be a reason for this in inaction. Edgy. I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Since I thought you've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? Y yes. I may really say it this time. Ah! Then say it. Very well, I have a terribly bad feeling about this. However, let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, for this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? I'm a Dunim. I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge. I was whipped up into a frenzy of art. The shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Before I realized it, the flames had gone out and then he came ringing, then he came running up. Hmm. I suppose artists can be strange folk. That's right. I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Including the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last of your doubts? Not at all, Your Honor. One very large doubt still remains. And what would that be? This is a surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him. You'll regret this, Edgy. Hmm. 
All right. And then press... Sketching? The burning bridge? The burning bridge and everything that came with it. What came with it? You want to hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You'll regret this. That sketch of mine is... Enough. Just take that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, witness. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. That does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edgeworth. What should I do? I've got a terrible feeling that the instant this sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed by what is depicted there. Look at the sketch. Larry, I wonder if you could show us your sketch, please. Well, well. Even I couldn't have imagined it to turn out like this. Imagine what? At Larry's Donim's debut would take place here, today, like this. Ow, 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 ow. Show it, now. Okay, steal yourselves. This is the world of Laurie's Donim. I mean, it's a bit stiff, but it's not a bad drawing at all. <laughs> I'm fiery. Um, well, so this, and this is Dusky Bridge, correct? This bridge is on fire! Yes, exactly. <laughs> <coughs> Quite a large bridge, isn't it? Your response, Miss Von Karma? Y yes, well, it it's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it? Isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames, I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Edgeworth noises. <laughs> oh my god, that reminds me. Wait, did I send it to you? Because oh, there was like a a, a video <laughs> uh, that I that I, I I found. I don't know if I sent it to you or not. Damn, I, I think I meant to send it to you, but like there was like a tiny, tiny spoiler or something that like protrudes to a spoiler. So I was like, oh no, I can't do it. It's going to get ugly. No one has the courage to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Larry. What? This, the burning bridges. <laughs> no, I'm curious. I don't even remember what like the, the actual like spoiler was because it's literally just a crack video <laughs> i can show it to you later though the burning bridge is fine but what is that unfortunate looking figure oh you spotted that i thought you might however much i might want to ignore it i can't it's iris of course iris i wish you'd take better care of herself we have to plan for our future you know what would have happened to her if she had injured herself flying like that Larry, please, answer this next question honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant? Flying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames. Yep, that's what I saw. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist, a real artist. Are you... Hi? <laughs> the girl, she's really high up in this picture. Mm, yes, exactly. Oh, uh, what was that for? This is all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test that theory. And please whip your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wild theories. A anyway, no court of law will ever acknowledge that people can f fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. She was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. She was about 30 feet above the bridge, at least. It was really something to see. This has to be some kind of m mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, please bring the witness back down to Earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. 
<laughs> Let me be honest, how much crack have you consumed? <laughs> Let us get back to the cross-examination by force if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Y yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what do you think of my de debut piece? Get that thing away from me. Horrible sketch. Now hurry up and cross-examine him. Hmm. So Iris flying, her white hood fluttering, but... we already been through these. And then there is like one testimony left. Not that I particularly care, I forgot to read what he said. In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I- I do exactly what I saw. I'll give you a whole dollar if that is the truth. If that is truly the case, then there is one thing that we can say for certain. Well, what might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant, Iris. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. Ugh. A foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly foolhardy fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood. Correct. Of course she was. The rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me that this floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. Ugh. It seems there are bigger fools in this world than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there is something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. She had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to chance your story? change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took a flight? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Edgy, what's going on with Iris and Nick? Why you... Nick! You dog! I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited, and discarded straight into the garbage. Ha! Okay, man's laughing. Ugh. What is it now, witness? It feels like... I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy! Today is the day I get to completely stupefy you! What? What is the meaning of your outburst, witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive ev evidence. Definitive? Evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the burning bridge. And I... Laura is the Nim. She'll prove it. I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. And tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in the sketch. And show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy. Because I'm going to feed you a whooping serving of pain. Been serving as a whooping serving of pain this whole time, trust me. I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I frantically searched all over for her. That led to me finding a beautiful crystal sphere half buried and buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. A crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? But finders keepers. And that sphere, where did you find it? Let me see, around here somewhere. Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. It had pretty much stopped snowing by then. But there was still some falling as I walked to the bridge. Hmm, and the court accepts this crystal, crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? I want it back afterward. Hmm, and there's something on it. 
Oh my, it's blood. What? Blood? You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's going to push me around anymore. Didn't you want to be called Larry Istanim only a few moments ago? Do you think he picks up on that, though? That there was blood on the sphere? Obviously not. Objection! Larry. That night, there was someone. Someone who lost a crystal sphere. There was? Who? Who was a stupid idiot? Miss Elise Dunim. The mentor to a stupid idiot. The victim. I have a photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! A crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. I have one just like it on my brooch. They look nothing alike. <laughs> In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff, found at the scene of the crime. Ah, the crystal sphere. I mean, it's gone. What? 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 Just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris. After all, she was not wearing her hood. More importantly, the crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. That means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was a victim. Miss Elise Dunim? A fool alongside another fool on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. Larry went through all stages of grief there. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. You can't do that! I saw it with my own two- and this crystal sphere. And this is nothing more than a red herring. I honestly believe that. Give it some thought, and I'm sure you'll realize it as well, Miles Edgeworth. At least the name was in her room on the night of the murder. And there was no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this sphere cannot be related to this case. And that is all. Miss Francisca von Karma. The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal spear was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe that... that th exp ex expect us to believe this has nothing to do with the case. The crystal sphere. It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There is blood on the crystal sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent. Which is the exact same reason that he drew that ridiculous sketch. What? You mean... I'm the killer? No way! All joking aside, just when did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. She makes a valid point. There is no evidence that Elise de Nîmes left Hasakura Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. I want your final opinion on the disposition of this crystal sphere. If it is not related to the case, then this witness who you called will have been nothing more than, mo than a monumental waste of a time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. How does it work? Uh... Well, didn't we already discuss what it is? No, that wasn't us. That was me and Bengi. Ah, uh, it's um. Well, he says it's a cravat, but it's not a cravat. It's something else. Uh. Eh. 
A jabbit. J A B O T. A jabbit. That's the actual term for it, but it calls it a crabbit for some reason. <laughs> Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Apparently, yes, I can. Can I prove it? That isn't the issue. To simply prove it, that's the only option. That's what he'd do. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. No, are you kidding? Is it really? Because in in Norwegian, uh, we have a word that's like really similar, but except for uh, an I, it's an E. And it's literally just like scribbles. <laughs> it means scribbles. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. You will do what? That look in your eyes. You remind me of Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise. Because right now, I am Phoenix Wright. And I am indeed cornered. I believe this music is also called cornered. In order, I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the crystal sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. This crystal sphere, it was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right, if it, ha if, if it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game, o game over. The snow would have totally covered it. That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing? On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah. Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. Wh what? Yeah, it is scribbles. I figured it was. I was like, oh, that's 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 funny. That's similar. <laughs> order, order, order. On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff's crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could it- what could that have been? The sphere. There is some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. The murder didn't take place in the Hasakura Temple Courtyard? Only a fool would suggest such a foolish, foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who is the fool, and which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Miles, Miles Edgeworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the Hasakura Temple courtyard. That's not exactly true now, is it? To put it more precisely, what she saw was... The murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That, that's the same thing! No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge would very e could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus, there was no bleeding. You are forgetting one vital thing, Miles Edgeworth. Elise the name's body was found in Hasakura Temple. On foot, it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hasakura Temple. 
You mean to suggest someone carried the body all that way? I've made it this far. The only place to take this is to the end. I just need to prove that my version of the events is also perfectly plausible. Now, if the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method of, by which the victim's body was carried to the Hasakura Temple. And that snowy night! There is one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. <laughs> As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon. But it could also have been used to carry a body. Order! 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 Yeah. This! This is completely unacceptable, Miles Edgeworth. You've dug yourself into your own grave. What, what do you mean? And the only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. She's the one who moved the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? <laughs> You're too late, Francisca von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. What? Where was the victim, Elise Dunim, really killed? If her body was moved, whatever for? And finally... Just what does this image mean? Do you even need to think about that? Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However, he could never utter a lie that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamored. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defense stands firm on this point. Edgy, thank you! That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under, under these circumstances. <laughs> right. I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Francisca von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me? There was one reason and one alone for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case and then pass it on to Wright. Really? That's what this was all about? You could have just told me that from the very beginning. Then I wouldn't have ha had friends you- ah! Miles Edgeworth, I don't care what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you under my heel. A shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. A oh, shame, Frenzy! This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. You are an affront to all the legal system. I demand satisfaction. Mm, I cannot believe that the witness's testimony relates to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the questions it's ra it raises. Have his words here today been the, the truth or lies? The next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed. I am counting on thorough un investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you. Right. Court is now adjourned. Yay! Ooh, wonderful. Mmm. Oh my god. Now we only have two investigations parts and three trial parts. So I'm finishing we finished chapter Miles Edgeworth his attorney. No, but like that's that's the actual like isn't that the full title of no, that's Ace Attorney. No, it is Miles Edgeworth. Uh, Ace Attorney Investigations, I believe it is. Or is it just Miles Edgeworth Investigation? No. No, it's Ace Attorney. It's still... Hold on. <laughs> Ace Attorney Investigations. So... 
Miles Edgeworth. Interesting. Uh, oh my god, my ears. I was hoping that it wouldn't hurt so much if I wore a hood over my ears, but it still hurts. There we go. <laughs> huh. Hmm. I guess so. I mean, it has to be. Either that or it's just like so that you know that it's like in the same. It's in like the same franchise. That's what I was looking for. That's the word I was looking for. It is very cute, but it's unfortunately a bit too small for now. So it's like a bit too small in the shoulders and like... <laughs> in my armpits, but it's whatever. If I wear it like a jacket, it's fine. But if I like zip it shut, then it's just way too tight. <laughs> I want more like cute stuff like this. And also that very... Uh, Thick hoodie I've been using a lot. Very fluffy and very, very, very warm and very nice to wear. Anyways, whatever. I'm, I'm rambling again. But what would the end of a stream be if there were no ramblings, you know? Like, I, I gotta ramble at the end. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Oh my god, I want one too. I mean, I would need a cat for that, but I want one too <laughs> but also can you imagine how much fucking fur would be inside of that oh, i should have changed the title of the stream you know what whatever it's fine huh mm. so much hair mm -hmm. exactly After a while, you would just have, like, another cat inside of that pouch. <laughs> Baby hair cats. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Anyways, I am kind of tired now. Maybe I should actually try and get to bed kind of early considering I haven't been... I haven't fallen asleep until like 7. Maybe even 8 the last few days. Which has kind of been a... Uh, dumb on my behalf. But like last night when I finished dreaming, I saw that fucking West had released like new tour merch and I'm like you can't do this to me now fuck I literally just spent fucking 2,000 kroner on you guys can you like fucking not I also got my period today so that's like you know yes we love it we love it truly so that's probably also why I look kind of tired no, just like, what a lovely combo. Mm-hmm, 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 huh. Of course. But like, as an asexual, this is maybe like a bit TMI. I don't fucking know. I don't really care, to be honest, right now. But like, I don't understand, like, the, the, the point. <laughs> I don't get the point. Like, <laughs> Like, I, God, I wish... Like, what, what the fuck do I have it for anyway? It's not like I'm ever gonna get any use out of it. <laughs> Considering I don't want kids, and if I ever change my mind, adoption is very much a thing. <laughs> so... Like, back in 2012, I believe, I had, like, I had surgery to get rid of this, like, uh, ovarian cyst I had. 
So I got rid of that and I also got rid of one of the ovaries at the, at, at the same time. So I'm like low-key hoping I get another cyst just so I have a reason to get rid of my second ovary. Just so that I don't have to fucking deal with it anymore. I'm so over it. Like, fuck. Huh. <sighs> it wasn't really painful. I mean, it probably wasn't the beginning, but I had it for so long. So... I had it for so long, so I probably just got accustomed to it, really. So, it was it was hell after surgery, though. Um, like, I, I feel like we're in 2021. By now, we should have a, an update. <laughs> that makes, like... Periods, uh, what's what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, voluntary. Like, you have to be like, hey, do you want to? Yeah, firmware. <laughs> When's the next firmware update? <laughs> exactly. And just so you can like turn it on or off. But like, once you turn it off, you can't get it on again. So you have to like think about it more. You can't just be like, oh no, I'm gonna turn it off. Unless you know for certain that you just want to turn it off. Do they really though? Aren't like... Well, I guess heat isn't exactly the same thing. It's like what comes like after. Or before. It's so... Ah, I see. It's bullshit. Firmware update when? <laughs> My god, you can't just get rid of them either because fucking hormonal imbalance and bullshit. It's just so dumb. I mean, that doesn't sound very comfortable, but at least that's easier. <laughs> wow. Really? That's interesting. <laughs> ah, vasectomy. I see, I see, I see. Oh my god. We do have to suffer. My god. I'm glad it wasn't too bad today. Also, luckily, I am one of those people that don't have it very bad. If I have it bad, it's like the first day. And usually I just like take like some painkillers and just fucking pass the fuck out. That's usually what I do. <laughs> if it's really bad. Today, luckily, wasn't bad. Damn. But like prior to my surgery, everything was fine. I had like no like pains or anything. But it was like after after I had my surgery, it was just a lot worse. Oh no, that's the worst. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for you. Oh my god. Ah. <sighs> Anyways, I guess I'll just end it here, I guess. <laughs> Not really much else to do. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I should get some sleep. I really should.
Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I mean, it's a little bit early. I'm worried I'm gonna wake up at like 7 and be like, Fuck! I don't want to wake up and then I can't fall asleep again and then just like get tired at around 7 in in the evening and it's just like it's a loose loose situation I hate it so much <laughs> I may be up for a, um, a few episodes of Ace Attorney <laughs> just like before I go to bed I can't even see it because of my mic. <laughs> Same brain. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope to see you tomorrow when we finish this bitch. Yes. And then, either on Sunday or maybe next week. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. We're gonna start investigations. <laughs> Oh my god, you're gonna love it! <laughs> Let's wrap this case up. Oh hell yeah. Tomorrow, baby, tomorrow. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. I'm kind of interested to see, like, how I'm gonna do the investigations games because they're more intricate. Because. Well. You actually walk around for once. <laughs> you don't just press buttons. You actually walk around with your character. Or with... Edgeworth. Yes, you walk around with him and you walk around and you like... Talk to people and check out... Not just point and click, no. But it's, it's still very much point and click, but it's not only point and click, you know. Also, I believe you can look at the evidence like you can actually like examine evidence though i may remember that wrong i'm not too sure there are also some like new stuff and new characters for ones uh not for ones but for one and it's just a lot it's just a lot don't look up anything about it i want you to go into it completely blind only with me guiding you. <laughs> so, yeah. Peace. It is so much fun.